Gravy, gravy, gang! What is going on, everyone? Happy gravy day to you and yours. It's Alex, Pat, and Robert, the Hog Barbosa, back at it again. Hanging out with you on episode 543 of Pass the Gravy. It's also nominations day. We have our nominations for the 2023 Gravies Awards going down Saturday, December 16th at Southern Star Brewing Company. We're really looking forward to that. Uh, we'll get to that after Comeback Kid. And um, yeah, before we uh, before we get into all that, this is the pre cum segment where we get to talk about whatever the fuck we feel like talking about. And Pat, I need to come to you as my my restaurant expert. You work in the biz. You know, mm-hmm. you are you are the best guy I, I know when it comes to questions about the restaurant business. Are ghost kitchens just scamming everybody into thinking that they're a bunch of different restaurants? Like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, I've never understood the appeal of it. Uh, like, as a, as a consumer going there, I don't want to just show up to an Arby's because I'm picking up a fucking cheesesteak from another company. That's weird. They don't give a shit about the food. They're just making money. Like, it literally does not matter what it tastes like to them. So you know it's just shit quality right. ingredients that are being shipped out from a central location anyway. I, I don't so, understand them. I, I did a deep dive on this. And by a deep dive on this, I mean I watched a TikTok that I was interested in. And then I was more of intrigued to so watch a couple more. So I watched about three TikToks. That's the extent of my research. And it was pretty much somebody just showing if you go to a DoorDash or like a food delivery app, and you type in like, oh, I'm like, you're like, oh, I've never heard of like Billy's Burgers. Like, that's cool. That's not like, what's Pat's Shakes? Let me go click that. I've never heard of Pat's Shakes. And like, you go type in the address it gives you. And it was like this, like three out of every four of them were like Denny's. It was like, if I hadn't heard of this, it's a Denny's. It was like, Denny's just, just like, yeah, it's uh, Stevie's Burgers. Get the uh, the bird burger. It's got an egg on it. And it would just be Denny's making a burger that then some DoorDasher would pick up. You'd think it was from there. So you'd be like, I don't know. This place, uh, I, I just tried this new place off of DoorDash. I don't trust any place that I've never been to now on DoorDash. I don't trust DoorDash at all. I had no idea they were operating like that, too. I had heard of ghost kitchens. And ghost kitchens, to me, I always just had pictured like, oh, it's like a it's a kitchen that you can rent out like, to a business. That made sense. I just figured it was Yeah, like, that's what I thought. This is just a specific <laughs> building that is like all they do is like, here, we have a bunch of kitchens. You can use these if you'd like to rent these. I didn't realize oh. it was like TGI Fridays being like, yo, dog, like y'all need to use our kitchen overnight. We can hook you up. Like you can rent it from us. I didn't realize that's what it was. But they were just, like, go in on DoorDash. Just start Google. And if you haven't heard of a place, Google the address that they give you on DoorDash and like, you're going to be shocked on how many of them are just chain restaurants. It's just wings is Chili's, which obviously that's why people like them so much. It's from Chili's. So it's excellent. But like, <laughs> it's just wings is literally just like, they make the wings in Chili's. And if you're a DoorDash, you can pick them up at a Chili's and then leave. And then go take them to somebody. And they think it's from this, this place. Ghost kitchens are fucking scamming everybody, bro. I mean, if you're just bringing your own food and like using part of their kitchen, so be it. I mean, it is what it is, but I've always just seen them as like some companies puts a menu online and then they'll just ship it out to, like you said, local Denny's. And it's like prepackaged, like cheesesteak meat or like pre-breaded tenders or, you know, just like any food like that. And you're like, well, this is going to suck. I never even... Yeah, I don't know. The, the whole idea of ghost kitchens blows my fucking mind, too. Obviously, it's working. I mean, at least as a business model, I don't. I I, I guess it's because you don't actually you're not paying out people yourself like employees. You're just renting other people's employees. So you still don't even have to worry about. Them. OK, so I just looked it up again. Uh, so <laughs> the meltdown and the burger den, if you ever see those on a DoorDash <laughs> or like Uber Eats app. It's Denny's. I've never heard of any of these places that you've said. And so it was this lady on TikTok and she was basically like showing like the address of the place. Like, okay, this is the, this is the name of this place. I've never heard of this. Cool. Copy paste address, go and put it in Google maps. Oh shit. That's a fucking TGI Fridays. But it told me it was this place. And it's like a Denny's just has like hipster burger names. Like, oh, this is the foul burger because it's got chicken on it. 
and you're like, oh shit. And like they were showing that there's there was some that was like during uh during baseball playoffs, it was like baseball, a baseball themed place. And you're like, oh, whatever. And it was just like fucking Applebee's selling shit out of the back, being like, Yeah, no, we're this place too. But like Danny's is is just getting people that are like, Oh, I'm gonna order from this new this new uppity place. It sounds like it's a really fancy, like kitschy area. And it's like, no, you're ordering from Denny's, bro. If you've never been there and you don't know where it is, you've not seen it, you've never heard of a restaurant, don't order from it anymore. I was just I've never I wonder how many crawfish I've ordered that have come from like a fucking McDonald's kitchen. You think that's happened? Maybe not. I don't know. Probably not McDonald's, but yeah, definitely. Now that I know that it works that way, yeah, a hundred percent. Some of the crawfish that you've eaten has been from hey, a fucking random place. Stay woke, everybody. Ghost kitchens, they're out there. They're, they're spooking everybody. They're spooky kitchens. It's scary to think how much money I may or may not have spent at ghost kitchens thinking I was getting like, oh, this is a new place in town. And I bet they'll, they'll be the ones that are like, oh, eat local. Free delivery on this place. And you're like, <laughs> oh, I've never heard of the meltdown. That's This is just blowing my mind that they worked. I didn't realize this yeah. layer to it as well. I don't like so it either, you, okay, but I, I, I don't like it, but I don't know why I don't like it. There's something about it that's just unsettling to me. It's fucked up, but it's kind of like I respect the hustle where you're like, Denny's is like, yo, dude. Yeah, like, there's nothing wrong food, with it at all. Breakfast food should be the answer always, but like, what if we just like expanded? Okay, well, we also make burgers. Yeah, but people aren't going to come here for the burgers, but what if we just said we were another burger place? And listed it on the delivery apps. No one's going to know the difference because they're not coming in to eat it. And they're like, yeah, dude, okay. And then they're just selling burgers. Like, people are getting food out of a Denny's that are thinking they're ordering gourmet burgers. Not saying Denny's is not a gourmet burger, but you would not think of Denny's if you were saying gourmet burger. I, so I respect it, but both like, gotta, they're fucking with gotta, us. Dude, I don't trust we gotta, anything. We got to move on because, like, now I'm just putting my head more and more in a fucking pretzel, man. It's like when... When I God first learned about Facetune <laughs> on Instagram, where you're like, "Well, it. no, yeah, like these girls, they can just any imperfection on their face or any blemish, they just curve it away or whatever." And I'm like, "What? None of these photos are like, no, no girls are using those. They're, no girls are using their real pictures on Instagram. I was like, what? all of these big booty pictures are not real." It blew my mind. And this is Ghost Kitchens. It was the big booty pictures and Facetune and Ghost Kitchens blowing my mind. So stay woke out there, everybody. At least like copy paste the the address and see if you're you're really like buying from somewhere else. And if you do, at Pass Gray Pod, let us know. I want to know. Let's expose these brands. Unless it's Chili's, they can do whatever they want. We don't care. They're awesome. So it's just wings. If you need wings, go there. Um. So that was that was one of the things I had. As a, as a pre-com segment bit. And then I, this is, I guess, not cool. But it wasn't my not cool. So I'm just going to gripe about it right now. Um, it also is just one more knock against Dallas. No big deal. Um, a guy I know, uh, shout out B Parks. He went, he had tickets to the Dallas Stars and Dallas Mavericks games at American Airlines Arena or American Airlines Center or whatever in Dallas this weekend on Saturday. The Stars played and then the Mavs played. And he had tickets to both games. And I see his post on Facebook. He was like, just, he's obviously very distraught as I would be. He bought both tickets being like, yo, I'm going to get to see what I think Pat and myself have always wanted to see in person. And I'm sure many people, many fellas, at least listening to this, many dudes listen to this. I want you, you're thinking I have tickets to two games in the same arena that are in two different sports. That means I get to hang out in between and watch him change the, change the ice to hardwood which I have watched countless time-lapse videos of, oh, hey, the Bruins have a playoff game tonight, but the Celtics have a playoff game tomorrow, and then the Bruins are playing again the next day. So watch this. TD Garden changes from a hockey rink to a basketball court, then back to a hockey rink. I'm like, well, yeah, I want to watch that. Like, I'll watch the fuck out of that. And he was like, hey, I thought reasonably, like, I bought tickets to both of these games. I thought, why not? Like I can obviously just hang out and they make him leave. They were going to make him leave. He tried. He had called a bunch of people. He was like, is there any way I could do that? They're like, no, no chance. No chance. And I was like, first off, um, our friend Brant Tobler 
um, the expert on sneaking in places had told us like get a high visibility vest. A lot of times you can get through a lot. Nobody asks questions. If you have one of those on it, just act like you, you work there. I was like, grab one of those, but like lay it back in the bathroom for a little bit after the stars game's over, wait 20 minutes, then come back out, kind of walk around, just act like you're, you're walking with purpose for a second. And then just kind of, you know, linger and then start watching. Uh, I don't know if he did. He never got back to me. So I would assume he did not. But like, how is that not offered as something where like, like what are the, what are the odds? Like how many games do you think they can do in a, in a single day? Like, how many back to back hockey, basketball, or basketball, hockey. How many times do you think that that happens at American airlines where the Mavericks and the stars play probably like maybe 10 times a year at max. And I'm guessing nowhere near that four or five times. Realistically, I would guess. Like, yeah, probably how do you not something have like a, that because they schedule around it on purpose. But how do you not have a twenty-five dollar package at least? Or maybe I'd even maybe I'd even probably pay fifty bucks for it. Like every oh, you know, inflation, whatever. But like a, at least like a twenty-five dollar package. Like I'd pay extra to just like section off a group of fans, even like be like, hey, do you have tickets to both games? You have to have t- you can't have a ticket to one but not the other. If you have tickets to both, you have to be able to show us both tickets and then. <laughs> you can go stand over in section 180 or whatever while we clean the rest of the concourses. You know, you can, like, there's a way you could do it because you can't be like, oh, I, I understand the argument. Well, if everybody just stayed and went to both games and we wouldn't be able to clean up the arena in between. Okay, cool. Like, go stand here in this section. Go stand on a fucking concourse. You should be able to just stand and watch them change the floor. You're not on the floor. You're not obstructing it. You're just hanging out. You're not hanging out where the courtside seats would be. So, like, they have to put, uh, like, the wall up there for the for the hockey rink you're fucking standing up like up top like in the top of the lower bowl like you should be allowed to do that that's a fucking bullshit thing another strike against dallas but the fact that that's not allowed on nhl nba double header days is like it should be a war crime well one i i wouldn't want to stay to watch that anyway the time lapse super cool it's one of the coolest things in sports to watch but to actually sit there and watch, like part of what the why the time lapse is so cool is you see how drastically different it is, how quickly. Sitting there watching it slowly unfold seems boring as shit, honestly. Like you like, look don't up, you want to see it in person? No, I don't. I want not him. even a little bit. <laughs> but also, they just they have to get everybody out of there because most of those people, or I assume a good amount of the people working there, aren't working all day long on a day like that. It's probably two different shifts, and they want to clear everybody out completely. That's what I'm saying. You can can charge for it. Pay one guy. It's like their job is like, hey, y'all stand over here. This is where we hang out. You can watch this shit, nerds. Like, I don't care. I wouldn't want to do it every time, but like, that's like a one, like a rare opportunity. Like, okay, yeah, I'll watch this. I think it's kind of if you can still like hang. You know how you? I bet. I bet there is a way to do it. You have to buy a box. Or rent out a box for the entire fucking day, then they'll probably be like, "Yeah, you can hang out here," but not just in the general seating. I'll say that it's comparable to like the roof at Minute Maid Park. Watching it open, like it's kind of cool for the first minute, but then you just don't care anymore. Yeah, you're like, man, okay, this is taking a long, really taking a while. (laughs) But like, I think it'd be cool. It would be a cool like layover. Where there's like, yeah, there's other cooler things you could do, but like if I could, and they probably still don't serve beer, so like there, there's a way they could make an experience. Like if you could just have like one little like of those like collapsible like bars that just like, all right, cool. Like whatever the cost of the the beers are during the games, it just it's the same price until the next game. But like you guys can hang out here, whatever. We have this person that's kind of just a security guard, kind of hanging out with y'all. You can buy your beer and sit there in your seats and watch them change the court like a bunch of losers if you want to. But like, to me, I'd be like, all right, you fellas want to do that? Like, what else are we going to do? Go to another bar down there, spend a billion more dollars or hang out here, watch him change it from ice. to Like, I'm a simple man. Like at the in Arizona where the Cardinals play, where they can just slide the turf out all the way outside to like, like it, it just, it just slides out like a carpet and they can, they can get sun on the grass. Like I would watch the fuck out of that. But yeah, it's probably boring. But if I just had a couple yeah. beers... Hang with the no. fellas, like that's an easy way that I'd pass an hour. I, I I'm gonna take two things you said though and combine them into I think the only way to make it that I would want to sit there and watch it is if somehow the air the local airport was attached to the stadium and you had like a six hour layover and then you could be like you know upper like ceiling uh, 
like just looking over a railing watching it happen because you're just and you're like yeah. sitting on a bar stool if they've got it set up right there if i'm just drinking doing that and on a fucking layover for a flight any other time i'm like no let's get the fuck out of here especially because the beer is like you can yeah leave the stadium and have you know three or four beers for the price of what it's going to cost you to have one beer in the stadium probably i don't know it's a cool experience i would again not wouldn't do it every time but like that seems like he should have been allowed to do that no nah, i think we've pretty thoroughly punched holes in this 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 sounds dumb no i, I, real I, dumb. I know but you, it's, he's a simple man he's just it's like the guy just like i want to watch trains i like watching the trains go by it's like let him watch the trains man let him watch the trains he, he likes watching Life planes land. let him watch them dude let him watch them who fucking cares he's parked too close to the airport he's not doing anything he's just sitting there watching planes land dude What's wrong with it? Planes are fucking cool. Just living his life. Planes are cool. So is it? They're, so are, they're it's peaceful. Also cool when they change what? It's Some also cool that wow, it. this surface was not this surface before. That's also yeah, cool. But planes are way cooler because there's also the chance of like, oh my god, what if they fuck up the landing? And you get to just watch that in real time. Big explosions are cool. But don't you kind of hope in the back of your head? like every time you watch one of those time-lapse videos where they're changing it from ice to, to what that is going to explode or vice versa no that you're like oh fuck somebody lost one of the pieces of the hardwood they're gonna have to play with a little part of ice chaos ne- literally never once oh, wow, in my life be. <laughs> never once in my life you know how crazy that that. but that would tonight's be sick. dallas Tonight's Dallas Mavericks Denver Nuggets game will be played with one square of ice exposed, <laughs> adding an element of danger. Right under the basket. <laughs> Nobody wants to dunk. Like, you don't know where it is. Like, dude, we couldn't find the square. I'm sorry. They probably or one one there. piece of hardwood in hockey would be great too. Defender skating backwards, all of a sudden the skate catches yeah. that. She goes flying. So I have two things just off of that that are random thoughts, and then we can move on. Uh, one, I saw this video over the weekend of a gym somewhere in California, and it's a pool. It's like a natatorium, or it's a gymatorium, is what I think they had nicknamed it. But it's the natatorium where the sw- like the the pool is that like they do all the swimming stuff. It's also the basketball court, and like it would just close the court over the pool, which was insane to me. Seemed like it would be uh seemed like there could be some risks with it, but that looked pretty sick. And then. As we were talking about, like, Minute Maid having the roof open and closed, like, that would be a sick, just, like, they have the, is the roof open or closed? That'd be cool if it was just, like, it's, it's varying. Like, if you just committed to, like, the start of a game, like, we're going to open it, then we're going to close it, then we're going to open it, then we're going to close it, then we're going to open it, then we're going to close it. And just, like, the second it closed, you got to open it again. So it's never, like, you never know. When are we going to come out to bat? Is it going to be an advantage? Maybe, maybe not. Are the, is the wind going to be blowing in? Will that be a factor? Who knows? Depends on what time. That would be a wild, just like one off of like a like, like throw that on like a Sunday game. Nobody really cares. We're all kind of hungover. It's a Sunday game. Everybody's getting a rest. You're like fucking go, dude. Whatever, bro. I'd watch that. I'd pay attention to that. That would be cool. To just like look up and be like, ha ha. Because that minute made when you look up and you see the roof moving. Like even if you've known it was moving the whole time, you're like ha, sick. Yeah, but I'm not gonna watch it. <laughs> I'll just be like oh, three minutes later. Oh yeah, it's cleared some room. I'm not gonna sit there and stare at it. I'm a simple man. Like Matt. like Robert said, for Little about things. a minute. And then you're gonna be like, all right. It's the little things in life like engineering marvels. They uh, like thing. like retractable roofs and just changeable surfaces. Loved it. Used to have one of those air hockey tables that could also be a pool table and all oh, that. Loved changing it. Changed it so much it broke. Oh, yeah, that was sick. Mostly because you were supposed to keep it on one. Yeah, but whatever. That's really all. Those are my thoughts on the pre segment. What did you guys have today? I felt like they were they were quality. I, uh, I had a, just another moment today where I understood that I literally – I don't understand how social media is supposed to be used. And not even just in like – you know, how to create reels and shit. Like people, I, I, if you said right now, Hey, do a reaction to this video. I would, wouldn't even know how to do that. But the host walks in today and walks up to me, like all smiling and giggly. And she's like, you watched my story. And I was like, I don't, 
I didn't, I didn't realize she was talking about Instagram. I was like, I don't understand what you just said to me. Those words don't make sense in that order. And she was like, look, and like pulled up her Instagram and shows that like, I watched it and I was like, all right. Like, I think to her generation, that's like flirting, watching people's stories. First of all, I didn't even know you could see that other people could see your stories, but like, I just click on the top left one when I get on Instagram and then I just start scrolling through all of them. Is that supposed to be a thing? Like, looking with the youths we're we're getting we're getting to that point where we're at another like generational gap we're like that's like remember um robert you don't remember poking on facebook probably but remember when that was a weird thing where it was like what does it even mean no one knew but like it'd always be like you'd do it with like some girl in your class that's kind of like you'd think you were flirting but you're like i don't even know if i am flirting but i think she's hot so poke poke you got poked (laughs) And it was like, what is it even? So and so poked you back. Okay. What? Yeah, what, I just, why? It's like so and so watch your stories. But yeah, I think a lot of times, like it is just default. I think a lot of people do play the game where so when you post when you post a bunch of stories, you go and you look who viewed them, and then you see I didn't if they know viewed you could do all that. of your stories or if they fall off. Because like Robert always looks at the first story and then he just swipes out. He swipes out because he doesn't want to see my stories. So I'm always like, <laughs> fuck you, Robert. I always say that Robert doesn't really do that. Robert actually watches most of my stories, but um, you can tell if people do that. And sometimes like if you post a bunch of stories, like today I was posting some of the, uh, the non listener viewer gravy nominees uh, just out on, on Instagram. And then I'd share all of them. And like, I'd be like, Oh, these people don't really give a fuck about the gravies award. These certain people do, but you could tell where the gravy gang was because they'd watch all of them and they wanted to see the nominees. But yeah, like, I think that's part of it, but yeah, we're, we're just getting old. So like, that's the new thing to see like if somebody liked them, like like we had the top eight on MySpace. They didn't have that. Oh yeah. This is what they have. Like who looked at my stories the most. Yeah. But I was like, man, she just like, yeah, I looked at your story. It sucked. <laughs> well, granted, I mean, granted, it wasn't like her in like a pool, so it's like her in a bikini. But like I was literally just scrolling through. So I was like, I don't know, does she think mm-hmm. I'm hitting on her? When her boyfriend comes and sits at the bar like every fucking two, three days. Like, this is weird now. But also, like, I feel like I'm a supportive likes guy too sometimes. Where I'm like, hey. I throw everybody any likes. Positive, any positive, any, yeah, I throw so many. Like, I'm a like whore. If you went and had like, actually, if, the if only they had a likes... Spotify wrapped for like likes you gave out, I probably gave out a million likes this year. The only likes I don't put out are like chicks in bikinis. Like, you know, that I know or whatever. Like, if, like, you're in your bikini, I'm not liking your story. Because then you're like, we're in our 30s. That's oh, I, not, not stories. Not stories. That's why. Like, your posts? Like, yeah. That's what, like, social media is. Like, except for Twitter. I understand Twitter to, to tear people down. But I like that the other ones, you're like, like, on Facebook specifically, like, anybody that's promoting anything, I'm like, yes! Heart emoji. Like, let's go. Go off. I'll share the fuck out of that. Let's go. <laughs> go like, off. Go off. Yes, you tell them. Some girl just <laughs> got a hair. She colored her hair different. And I'm like, let's go. Fuck yeah, dude. Like, double tap. Like, yeah, it's like we're we're here to gas you up on Facebook and Instagram, but you better be be ready to go when we step into the Twitter world because I'm fucking, I'm a dog there, all right? I'm nice outside. Yeah. Twitter's the streets. Twitter's the streets. And I think we have to respect that, and that's a healthy little respect that you have to have. Yeah, Twitter is great. Yeah, because yeah, up everybody on IG and and, and Twitter and I mean, I mean you can guys on Twitter. Twitter too, but IG and Facebook that's for gas and up. Twitter it's for real talk or just debate or just chaos. Twitter is for unleashing or my inner like sixty four year old Republican man where I just get angry at political posts. I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> I, yeah. I I I sat there the other day and I was like, dude. Last week, I think I did post like four political ones where I probably did just give an answer like fucking ridiculous. I was like, yeah, all right, I, 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 I got to calm pa- down. Political Pat was out last week. I was like, I got to get off Twitter for a little bit. <laughs> it's getting to me. But then also Twitter, I just have just stupid, dumbass jokes. So it's great. It's just anger and comedy, which are my two favorite emotions. I know comedy's I not like emotion, when people whatever. They do they like I'll post to Facebook that the, like a lot of the stuff that I also post to Instagram and everything too. But I like when people have like, oh my god, I'm just so sick of this and I'm so fed up with 
with my parents right now on this and this and whoever else I'm mad about and blah, blah, blah. And they post it on Facebook and you get a bunch of sympathy on that. And then they post the same thing on Twitter and it's like, oh, no. <laughs> not he no don't you didn't just oh that's not gonna go d- delete it just quick delete it and they're like fucking pussy you better hope Fuck a meme up, account doesn't fucking pussy. share it get over it life comes at you fast yeah, get a no, job that's really mean but that's what twitter is dude that's the beauty and the chaos of twitter yeah i saw somebody so call yeah that's how, a... they, that's how the youths know who likes who I, somebody posted a picture of their like five month old daughter, and somebody said something like, "That ugly ass baby looked like a mole rat," and posted a picture of a mole rat. I was like, "Jesus Christ!" I started, I was laughing so hard. I was like, "This is why I love Twitter. Why would you randomly insult somebody's five month old daughter?" It was a great way to start my day, honestly. <laughs> People on Twitter are just the fucking worst of us and i love it yeah they are it's everybody's worst version of themselves it kind of is it kind of is and it's yeah or just trolliest version of themselves trolliest that's probably it yeah because the people that are just like bleeding hearts all, all the time on twitter like you're a better person than me i'm cool with that i'm cool admitting that but like god it's awesome if you're just getting you're you're so mad about everything on twitter it's like brah Twitter is to yell at the college football playoff committee. Like that's what that's for. Yeah, it is like, different. You yell, like, you've, the you've bad guys yelled at a senator every day. Yeah, it's the same thing, but just I don't know. I don't know, Robert. What about? Would you bring in for precom today for the precom seg? What's up, Hog? I really want to be right. Okay, that's it. Oh, I'm gone. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he took his video off. Oh, uh, I'm not off here anymore. God, now we lost dude, access. It would suck so bad if everybody at the uh, <laughs> spectacular when Robert said anything just started no, storming like a hog. Leave. <laughs> what if he leaves? Um, I really want to make fried chicken, and I don't know how good of an idea that is because I don't have anything. Is it terrifying? To it you is, at it all because I, you've seen the grease fires. Mm-hmm. I've never fried anything before. I don't have anything like I would just put it like in a, in a pot that I have. I wouldn't do in a fryer outside. It would just oh yeah, you could in fry my kitchen. Dude, you could fry kitchen, uh, fried chicken on your stove, no problem. Yeah, you could. I've never done it before. How bad of an idea is it? It's not a bad uh, idea a at all. Idea. People do it every day. You need to watch, document watch. it and you need to post it. Watch a two-minute YouTube video, and you've got it down. Also, season your flour. People that don't, you, people don't think about that. You got to season the flour before you, you know, when you're bread the chicken. What so I you get flavor. It with? What do I season it with? Whatever seasons you want. Throw a little salt in there, pepper, hey, what seasons do I want? cayenne. Have fun with it. Whatever you like season your norm salt. Yeah, well, yeah. Throw then a lot of cayenne in there, some red pepper flakes. Here's but I'm thing. just saying, you I gotta make normally, it taste like something. I don't normally season my food. I don't. Usually, no salt, no pepper. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Probably I make, good for your cholesterol. I make eggs in the morning. Not good for my cholesterol, but I, I don't season them with anything. I don't even I know how to respond to that. It's the one non-white guy on the podcast that doesn't season his food. Fuck you, internet. This um, is the, re- the reality. <laughs> what the fuck? You don't I think see- you, sh- you should definitely make fried chicken. You, you should definitely make fried chicken. But just to give you a fun little story from when I was in college, I remember I did not know these people, but they lived down the hall from me. And I remember walking out of my apartment because I heard somebody's fire or smoke detector going off. And it was like going up to an extended period of time and we're like, oh, it wasn't just like they burnt toast and we're clearing it out. Like it had been going on for like 10 ish minutes. So I opened the door and this girl is just yelling at, I guess, her boyfriend at the time. But she was just yelling at him. And I just see a like orange light that I can only imagine was the fire of uh, what was ever going on. I was like, what y'all doing? And he was like, she's trying to make fucking chicken. And I just didn't know what she's doing. 
And he just like fucking went off to fucking call some shit and they fucking came back and then he had a fire extinguisher with him. I guess her fire extinguisher wasn't working or whatever. So have a fire extinguisher handy. I would say that because you can't pour water on it. it. Makes it worse. Yeah. I think our fire extinguisher is still good. I've never tested it. Got so. an expiration date on it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, go do it outside. Get get a rolly chair. <laughs> I should do that. I had Fine chicken is that, very uh, easy, Robert. You'll be fine. You'll be okay. It's intimidating. I had. I um, think you nail it, dude. I had some tor- tortilla chips yesterday. Went out to lunch with some coworkers. I'm like, oh yeah, they salt these Thanks chips. I, I mm. couldn't even like talk to you. There were so many people. But you didn't invite me. Still, so good to know. Hmm. Good. You were gone. Know, Robert, you were long gone. Don't invite Robert to. Yeah, probably, yeah I was probably gone. Robert came in yesterday. Robert was like, uh, when Robert's like, in the office, he'll come and we'll hang for a little bit. And sometimes Robert will just like do work in like the little studio I'm in because it's quiet and he doesn't have to like be bugged by other people. And Robert came in there and like two of the big bosses like walked in like right after Robert was sitting there. Robert was just trying to get like a stapler to put a fucking like to put his picture on his passport thing like they put his passport photo together. Robert's just being all innocent like in there and like they're just having this like insane like conversation about like all this very important shit and like oh hey robert and i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna go. <laughs> like he like, couldn't get out because it was a small little studio and robert, i could tell like robert's face be like fuck because one of them walked in and the other guy walked in i was like oh good it was like our lead engineer my boss just having like a like a, a come to jesus meeting about random shit that's going i didn't down. think they'd be like, in there that long i'm like you okay, should have yeah, you, you... a whole thing you should have just like jokingly tried to join in, and be like, "Yeah, I know, right?" <laughs> then, then they would probably be like, "But Robert does just like." Room? <laughs> but Robert just like won't say anything, and then like you just do feel like Robert's part of the conversation. Robert's very good at just like blending into a combo. Like, oh yeah, all those PPMs. Like, yeah, I'm Robert went crazy. You get it? Uh huh. Yep. Yep. The PPM meters, of course. <laughs> Richard's really not pulling his weight. <laughs> That's Richard for you. And, uh, I've been saying that for years, you guys. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> and then ask the the uh, like, them. Thanks, guys. If you could get a meeting on the books, if they, you got some big ideas for them, they'd love to hear them. I'll send you a Say calendar. That <laughs> Put that on the calendar. Yeah. I'd like to circle back after the holidays. So, yeah. and. Uh... <laughs> I do think you should definitely make fried chicken, um, but I feel like you can't just make a little bit of fried chicken. And you totally can. Meat. meat. You can make it just a tiny amount, like fried chicken Dude, for one. Because I always feel like fried chicken is just like a fuckload of fried chicken. That's what I'm no. thinking too. Like I gotta make a bunch. And it's Dude, always just good get, to date just get, for the boys. Just fry a boys chicken night. Breast. Fry a chicken boys breast. Night? You fucking just slice that bitch in half, and that's that's plenty of food for you and Sam for like a dinner. Well, one fried chicken eat. breast Sam each. Sam does not eat. She doesn't. Oh, eat that's meat. right. Well, either That's way, two pieces, two pieces of fried chicken, bam, you're good. You'll be very full and happy, and you'll sleep great. Chicken's very easy to fry. Or, or just buy, some, buy a couple wings. Buy like a little package of uh, wings at the store. Bread those and fry those. You got chicken wings. It's the same thing. You want a real chicken fry. You want to go full on fry fry, you know? Yeah. You just, just said it's only gonna be good over, for bro. one day, Robert, and you're gonna fry a whole chicken and eat all of it. No, I'm not. You can eat the breast, two thighs, two down. legs, two drumsticks, wings. <laughs> you're out of your mind. Dope. You could do it. Just be a fantasy. Just buy a chicken breast and fry <laughs> that. You'll be happy. And then it's just like the, the that feels of wasted. Effort to output, it feels wasted yeah. on chicken breast. Yeah. No, yeah. it's not. That's uh, that's only fried chicken. Robert, serve just at the hit me up, dude. We'll chicken, hang. Chicken breast, it's great. We'll hang, bro. We'll put together some stuff for the spectacular. We'll work. We'll bang out some ideas. Alex, mm-hmm. you don't want his fried chicken. He's not going to season it. No, I'll put some cayenne. But I can judge it. Whatever else you use to season things with. He just has whatever Whoa, he's got God. there, and it's just like some potpourri that he thinks is seasoning. You're like, no, that's potpourri, buddy. That's pine. You're gonna need, you're gonna need buttermilk too. 
You got to dredge the chicken. Or you dredge it in the flour, then it goes in the buttermilk, then back in the flour, and then fry it. There's too many steps. I really want you to document this. I really want you to document this for us. I feel like I know you're not going to, but like you should definitely do this because no, I now want to say for the first time, like I would watch that. I want Robert to take like a cooking class. That's what I want to document. Robert learning to cook. I just need to do. Well, that's the thing. Somebody needs to teach you. You just told me you don't season your food, and I'm so disappointed in you. (laughs) But it's fine. It's not. It's not. It's it's not. You just you just don't know. Like I remember when I would like when I'd be 18 years old, like just in college, be like we're making steaks. Like yeah, I don't even season it. Let the meat talk, and then no seasoning makes food better. That's why it's there. Yeah, it it makes it delicious. Lunch yesterday had some some chips, some salt. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. There were salt on these things. It's just too much. Robert thinks salt is spicy. We're about to make you an honorary white. I didn't say salt is spicy. There's just a lot of flavor in it. It's overwhelming. Oh my god, Robert! You just you're you're a fucking enigma, man. I love that. I love that. I don't even know what to fucking say to you. All right. Is, is that it? Is that it for the pre com? Yeah, I think that. Where did where did he go? I looked down. He's gone. He left us. He he just walked away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was trying to get you guys to fill real fast while so I went and grabbed the copy because we have a new advertiser. Okay, I was I was like I looked down because yeah. I was writing something. No, on my I laptop. just realized <laughs> you just weren't there. <laughs> yeah, as we're doing as we do the pod, I have like a list of what's coming up, and I had the ad that I did not have copy for but uh while we uh that was our pre com segment let's get ready for the comeback kids segment brought to you this week by the 2023 tax act texas bowl tickets are on sale now for the 2023 tax act texas bowl houston's biggest annual college football event returns to prime time at nrg stadium on wednesday december 27th as the texas a&m aggies take on the oklahoma state cowboys do not miss out on this come experience the passion pageantry and rivalry of another exciting big 12 versus SEC showdown to close out the college football season in Houston. Check out Texas or check check out taxacttexasbowl.com. That's taxacttexasbowl.com now for the best seats and suites on game day. Also enjoy exciting and free bowl week events before the game, like the kickoff concert presented by HEB on December 26th that features country music singer and songwriter Roger Krieger. Plus, before kickoff on December 27th, visit the Tex Fest outside of NRG Stadium to take in the sounds of up-and-coming country star Braxton Keith. Houston is the center of college football, of the center of the college football world this postseason with the national championship game here next month. But the fun starts December 27th with the Texas A&M Aggies taking on the Oklahoma State Cowboys at NRG Stadium. Again, for the best seats, suites, and bowl week events, check out Tech Tax. Fuck, it's all it all sounds like check out taxacttexasbowl.com. That's tax act tax act Texas Bowl. You try and fucking say it. Um, tax act. Tax Act, TexasBowl.com. It's the AM Aggies and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. It's the Big 12 and the SEC. It's the best of bowl season under the bright lights of Energy Stadium. Do not miss this. Tax Act, TexasBowl.com. That's Tax Act, TexasBowl.com. Get your tickets at Tax Act, TexasBowl.com, the official sponsor of our Comeback Kids segment. It's the comeback kid. The comeback kid of the week. The comeback kid of the week. Bitch. All right. Our first comeback kid this week is Grand Theft Auto. They released the trailer earlier this week. And I thought like they they leaked it. Or it was one of those like fake leaks, I feel like, where it was like, oh, the so somebody leaked it, so they just released it early anyways. And I thought I kept getting, like, Rick rolled, where I kept feeling like people were just putting, like, Florida Man footage. And then I realized that, oh, fuck, that's the game footage. Right. Because there's, like, this lady, like, twerking on her ass on a car, and then there's this guy yanking a, a gator out of a pool. And I was like, wait. Oh, shit. 
Yeah, no, that's real. And they were basing it off of like real Florida man scenarios, but it felt like somebody was just like, they got a couple of clips from the, the trailer and were trying to like just go viral real fast. And then you kept watching, and you're like, fuck, this is just the actual video game. And the actual video game looks fucking sick. It doesn't come out till 2025. That was the saddest part of the trailer. It's like, oh, cool, just over a year. But I can't wait. Back to Vice City. It's going to be sick. And I'm probably going to play it for a million hours, probably, when it comes out. Yeah. I mean, they're realistically, if they wanted to, they could be like, this one's going to cost $150. Nobody's going to flinch. Everyone's still going to get it. Yeah, It'll be a horrible, money. terrible thing to do. But fuck, they could make it two fifty. They'd still make a billion dollars on opening day. If they just pre-ordered now, I bet they would. Like you know, they'd have a million pre-orders with just a trailer and them going, guys. It's Grand Theft Auto. It's us, and we've been working on this one for ten years. Trust us, it's worth it. They'd fucking yeah. They do half a billion in pre-orders in like the first day. Yeah, easily. But it's back and it's sick. Robert, did you play Grand Theft Auto? Uh, I played for a little bit. Never beat the game. I don't, I don't know exactly how far I got, but I did play some not, of it. Yeah, crimes not for you. No, I don't. I don't like committing fake crimes. Mm. Only real Sometimes ones. Sometimes it feels nice. Just <laughs> lay off a little steam. Robert's gonna hit you with his car. He's gonna do it in real life. Damn it! Really He's feel something. Scott, you. <laughs> none of this none of this VR stuff. Finally. <laughs> Only I uh, yeah, great that thought is out. That looks sick, and uh I'm pretty stoked about it. It just means that like every month from the from like the next couple of like for the next year at least, like we're just gonna probably have a new trailer for it. Or so like every other month there'll be some sick new trailer and some cool feature you're gonna get on it. That'll be sick. Um and then I guess it's sort of video game worthy but just fun little mention fallout if either of you guys played fallout they're making a uh a series on that and amazon released the trailer for it and it's got walton goggins and some other fairly big names on it so that's that's pretty cool so if you like fallout that'll be on amazon i think in april um next up in combat kid is getting fucked getting fucked is back mm. this week because florida state got fucked by the college football playoff committee um if you've been living under a rock or you don't know anything or care about college football just quickly we'll wrap it up i'll, I'll try and wrap it up as, as fast as possible there are four teams that make it into the college football playoff there are then two games that determine who goes to the national championship and then those two teams that win the first two games play for the national title at the end of the regular season or the college the conference championship games they the playoff committee picks the four best teams this season they're very rarely four undefeated teams. This season, there were four undefeated teams. Michigan was 13-0. Washington was 13-0. I guess, no, there were not four undefeated teams. There were three undefeated teams. And then there was Texas. And Texas beat Alabama earlier this year. Alabama beat Georgia. So you would think Alabama would get into the, the, the college football playoff. No, 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 because they lost to UT. So UT gets in over them. Oh, Florida State hasn't lost a game yet wins their conference championship game, they should get into the playoff, right? No. Alabama goes in. Florida State, 13-0, not in the college football playoff. Egregious. Wrong. Bad move. They're probably still not the best. They're, they're probably still worse than Alabama, though. I understand that, but you can't keep Florida State out. It's the principle. Well, they Is can. It a better because... game? Is it a better game, Alabama and Michigan? Yes. But... How do you tell them to go out and play games when it's like, oh, it's thir you're thirteen and zero, and you can't get in the postseason? We're just not going to put you. Out. Because, because it'll never play. matter. It'll never matter again because they're going to the twelve team playoff next year. So it literally doesn't matter at all because there'll never be an undefeated team that doesn't get in from a Power Five conference. If you're undefeated, you'll be Fair. in now because there's twelve teams. They'll never have to deal with it again. So like, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's the last year, and because it's the NCAA. And they're the dumbest motherfuckers on the planet. Every decision they make when it comes down to like the athletes and shit, they fuck it up every time. Every time. The Florida State lost their starting quarterback who is, I don't know if he would have won the Heisman, but he was probably a Heisman candidate, I would say. Jordan Travis broke his leg like three weeks ago. And 
that was why a lot of people are saying that they did not include Florida State because like, oh, well, they have their backup quarterback or this past weekend they had to put their third string quarterback and people were arguing like, well, they're not going to be competitive. If they're if they're competitive or not, and like if if you're not not the Packers, I don't want to jinx the Packers. Um, let's say like Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. If the Eagles get the one seed in the NFC and somehow Jalen Hurts goes down the final week of the season, like they they're not just gonna be like Eagles can't play in the NFL playoffs. Like doesn't matter, whatever. Like can you imagine? Like, like I get that the NFL is different. Like. But like you still like don't not get to play in the playoffs. It's like we still went thirteen and zero. We went undefeated. How how are you not a playoff team? You're at, in the ACC, less than the SEC, but the you you're a, a no loss team. Alabama has lost to a playoff team. If you had to put a one loss team in, and it comes down to the team that beat the other team. You put Texas in over Alabama. The only reason that Alabama is in because they kept just being like Nick, but Nick Saban, but Nick Saban. But Nick Saban, people watch for Nick Saban, and they're playing and they so good. And right Alabama, now. Michigan, is a marquee game, and I, I picked Alabama to win it. I bet Alabama to win it already. But um, that's where I was leaning. I mean, I, I think they'll, I think they can, and it's just, it's, it just sucks. And I get, I get what you're saying. Like, it, they're never gonna have to worry about it again because it's gonna go to a 12 team playoff. But it just fucking sucks for Florida State. I don't, have, I don't give a shit. Yeah, it's horse State. shit. But it's bullshit that a 13 and 0 team got left out. It's I understand the SEC is the SEC, but like sometimes you have like the three headed monster and they just like fuck each other over the entire season. And it's like sometimes the tough teams just beat each other up and that hurts them. And I also I didn't Alabama realize until Texas at home when all this came out that only thirty eight percent of the people on the committee have a direct relationship with football, like that they were either former coaches or players, or I think it was like uh, administrative staff or so, something like that. Maybe it wasn't administrative, but whatever it was, like ever had an actual connection with the game and playing the game in some yeah. way, only 38% of the people. So the rest are just fucking randoms. That's crazy right. to me. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And, and uh, getting fucked is back this week because Florida State really got fucked. Really got fucked. We put up Jordan Travis for a Gravy's nominee. Um, that we'll get to later in just a little bit, but because of Jordan Travis, that was us. That's us giving Florida State a bone right there. And if Florida State, they do play Georgia, who also didn't get in, but they lost a conference championship game. They played Georgia in their bowl game, and if Florida State wins, they should absolutely just say they're national champions. For sure. Oh yeah, just claim it. It's college yeah. football. There's so many ones that are claimed that are illegitimate. This one you can actually be like. Well, you guys we said we were going to get team. killed. We, you said we were going to get killed no matter what. We just beat the number one team or the team that was number one all year with one loss. Yeah. And barely so, lost to Bama. I don't know, hopefully State beats, beats Georgia now. So do I. Just yeah. so they can claim a Getting national fucked. title. Comeback kid this week. Um, also, a comeback kid is Riz. Because that's that was the word of the year, they said. Those Sweet. The so Riz. Risen people. Hi. Up, dude. Hype. Him. Nope, that wasn't it. It wasn't that. It was Riz. Just Riz. No, no. I was saying hype in response to Riz being the word. Ah. Okay. That's hype. Dude. Not... Yeah. That's straight. That's hype, that's God. not actual. I was just making shit up. That's that's not slang. Well, Maybe it was at some point. Sure, I, I don't fucking know. Fuck, it could be slang right now, and I wouldn't know. I kind of like it. I think I heard from something. Oh, Letter Kenny. That's where I heard it. Canadians. It's Canadian slang, I guess. Yes, so. I'm fucking going to international. That's, that's the other one. <laughs> um, how how, how yeah. are we going to fuck this pig? How are we going to fuck this pig? When uh, you run into a problem, that's no. what it was. <laughs> um, I just want to make sure you so got Riz. your Canadian sayings right. Yeah. Riz is back. And then our next comeback kid. Um next to last one is Revenge. Revenge is back. You guys know myself. I am not a uh, big revenge guy. <laughs> Except sometimes I am. I'm actually a really big revenge guy. Um I do keep receipts. I do, you know, I do have not a hit list, but it's like I do have a set amount. There's people that, you know. 
if they fail, I'm not going to call them out on failing, but like, I'll, it'll make me happy. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you get on my shit list and I just want the worst for you. Yeah. It's hard to get on my Every- shit list, but once you're on there, Every, everybody's got one. Yeah, everybody's got one. Like everybody me. should have one. And everybody should have one person that you just fucking can't stand. Like I know I'm Roberts. An axe to grind. It's okay. Yeah. You are his bugaboo. Well, um, as as many of you guys and gals know, I previously was the part owner of an XFL franchise, the Houston Roughnecks, and. I was going great. I thought I thought we were having a, a fantastic relationship as co as as part season ticket owner and um and franchise until the Roughnecks made the postseason this year. You know, I I had a season ticket every single game when they went six and zero until the COVID shortened season happened. Stuck through them, stuck with them through the pandemic. They came back, got my season tickets right back where I had already had them, and then got kicked out of a playoff game. Got kicked out of a playoff game for standing up against racism and because I allegedly vaped, which I did not. Did not even have a vape on me. They didn't even want to hear me. I was like, hey, I'm a part a part owner. What are you guys doing? Didn't care. Kicked me out. Pat, fun fact. Or can you answer this fun fact? How many games will the Houston Roughnecks ever play after kicking Alex Middleton, part owner, out of their stadium? How many games will they ever play again? Uh, that Pat. would be a big old zero. Zero games. Huh. Huh. There was a merger, though, wasn't there? The USFL and the XFL just merged, didn't they? Yeah. You mean to tell me that a team that was the best best in the league for the first season that the league returned, and then the best regular season team, they're not going to be in, in the merger? What? Well... I mean, I know you're having fun with this, but you got to be fair with it. They're taking the Houston Gamblers. It's a much better name. Who have not ever played a game And it's Houston. got history. This iteration, they yeah, played all their games in like Birmingham but... and Memphis. Yeah, but they will be. They will be playing in right. Houston now. Yeah. And the, it's the Huge Gamblers. It's such, fan. It's such a cooler gamblers. name, such a cooler logo, cooler color set. It's got history. And now that like, Maybe having the Houston Gamblers, if the league starts to get a little steam and get going better off, maybe it helps break gambling to Texas faster. At least sports betting. Come on, that's a match made in heaven. Yeah. Get like Caesar but, Sportsbook to like be the official sponsor of the Houston Gamblers. That'd be I dope. Bet the, the Gamblers would never, would never eject me. That's all I'm saying. They've never ejected me from a game. I've never been to a Gamblers game because they didn't play the games here until now, I guess. But I've never been ejected from them. And the last team to eject me will never play a game again. So just think about that. Anybody that wants to cross me, just think about that. Because I ended the Roughnecks. Ended them. We even we were even campaigning that they get shut down a couple weeks ago when the merger news came out. But yeah, they kept the other two Texas XFL teams and you would have thought it would have been like, well, let's just keep the three. That makes sense. No, 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 no. They were like, fuck it, dude. We're not doing this. Get out. Ooh. It's the Renegades, the Arlington Renegades, DC Defenders, San Antonio Brahmas, the St. Louis Battlehawks, and the XFL, and the Birmingham Stallions, Houston Gamblers, Memphis Showboats, and Michigan Panthers from the USFL. Those are going to be the new US XFL teams. What if the Saudis bought the, the USFL? And just started throwing like crazy money at people. Like, they like every, the USFL every, used to do. They every great with run- the NFL. Yeah, every great running back would be in that league. Because they'd be like, I got to make as much money as I can right now. They probably would. Like the Saudi <laughs> Soccer League, but for the NFL. That's so fucking crazy. I don't know if they would allow it. I feel like the United States would block Saudi buying a football league in America just because they make no, you can't have this. Sport. by the XFL for like nothing now. Like that, that's nothing to them. But that's why I feel like the U.S. government would block it. They'd be like, no, 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 no. You don't get to get Not it. football. Because if they could just offer so much more money than everybody, so many people would just go, like half the teams would be gone. And it would hurt the NFL product. So that's what the USFL, or would it make them have to improve the product to make people want to go play there? That was initially no, because the they USFL just can't compete doing. with the money. They're like, we'll just pay Herschel Walker more. 
And then no, it's, they realize it's like, exactly oh, we, like that with, dried up. It would be exactly like with Live Golf. The PGA was like, no, we're not going to merge. And then eventually they're like, dude, we just can't pay the money that they can. Okay, now they own part of it. And then the Saudis would own part of the NFL. They would never fucking allow that to happen. Stranger things have happened, dude. Stranger things have happened. But yeah, it better not happen. Better not happen. But um, yeah, I got revenge. Rid of an XFL team. I took down an XFL team. Revenge. Don't cross me. Fuck you, Roughnecks. Do everything I gave you. Do everything I gave you. You spit in my face, and so now what? What do you have to show for it? Nothing. The Houston Gamblers is what you have to show for it. It's not you. PJ Walker didn't deserve this. But I had to do it. Had to. You know, it took me it took me a while. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it didn't shut down right away, but like I was patient. I let you win one. You won the battle. You did not win the war. Fuck the roughnecks. Revenge. Back this week. Also back this week is nominations because it's time for the 2023 gravies awards nominations they're going down saturday december 16th we are 10 days away as we are recording this podcast right now 10 days away from the 10th annual pass the gravy christmas spectacular i'm wearing my uh spectacular christmas spectacular shirt right now i got my uh my green one so you guys should uh pass the gravy merch.com go there and uh and get yours Oh, I gotta check the mail. We have an ad for that coming up. Yeah, Pat. Oh, yeah, Pat got one. I got mine a couple of days ago. I got. I think I ordered mine Thursday, Friday. It showed up Tuesday. So really fast turnaround. Uh, I got this this 500th episode sticker when we were doing the episode 524. So way after. This is a new new shirt, people, and uh, they can get that shit out there faster, and it's awesome. And uh, passagamemerch.com, passagamemerch.com. But um, that's another ad we were going to do. But before we do that, Pat, will you tell everybody about Southern Star Brewing Company, the sponsors and the hosts of our Gravies Awards? I mean, and what better to do when listening to the Gravy Awards than drink a delicious beer? The always classic, the uh, Strawberry Bombshell Blonde, the Bombshell Blonde. I've got uh, Buried Hatchet Stout over here. I got a lot of empties I got to throw away because I've just been crushing a bunch of Bombshell Blondes and shit up here. But, I mean, what else are you supposed to do with them? You can only look at them for so long, Robert. Eventually, you got to put that beautiful bastard right up to your lips and just suck away, you know? You know what I'm saying, Robert? I I, I don't. Oh, man. Oh, that's right. You don't drink beer. You don't know about sucking on it. So, it's okay. You know, some people like to. Some people don't. It's your prerogative. Uh, <laughs> uh, coming up. This Saturday is uh, the inaugural Southern Star Brewing Company Bake Off. Uh, $15 per baked item entry. Go up there. Eat a bunch of fucking delicious baked food. And drink beer. And your kids can run around. It's kind of cold outside, but not really that cold. Great outside weather. Get something good to eat. Um, Yeah, and then, of course, next week, you know. The week after, on the 16th, the uh, Spooktacular. The best day of the year. The day I look forward to the most. Robert hates it more than anything, but we got him to say I love you last year. Maybe we can get it to happen. Wait, was that at the Spook Tech? No, that was at. I don't think that happened. What? You said it. You said it. We've okay. got witnesses. This is fake news. Oh, you, you shy bastard. One of these days, I'm going to crack you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they got the bake off this weekend. They got the uh, annual Spook Tech the weekend after. And after that, you know, Christmas. Oh, you know, Robert, you know, it would make a great birth or Christmas present for everybody. Mm. Beer. Who doesn't love beer? Southern Star Brewery, man. And they've got a whole bunch. Get up to the brewery. They'll find a beer that you like. They've always got like five different IPAs on there. Uh, They usually have the mead, the skull. Damn it. I should have brought up the mead if I can't remember the name. You guys know it. Alex is probably fucking yelling at me from the other room with his headphones in. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I actually, some, I remember in college when my buddies wrapped up a six pack for me too. It was an actual present. So when I picked it up, I was like, why the fuck would you buy me a present? It was beautiful. We drank them together. One of the best Christmas presents I've ever gotten in my life. That and socks. Oh, get somebody stocks and stuff the beer, stuff the beer inside of them. Also great stocking stuffers. I don't care if it's warm. Oh, get them a, use the buried hatchet stout for the stocking stuffers. That's the way to go. 
Because a uh, stout is good room temperature as well, Robert. I don't know if you knew that. Pam, you wake up in the morning, you grab your stocking, start it off with a beer. Can't think of a better way to start Christmas. 3525 North Fraser Street, up in Conroe. That's where you'll find them. Get up there. Say hi. Mention you're part of the gravy gang. Take a picture with the poster up there. Send us pictures if you drink the beer, guys. I love you, Pat. Can I take over this ad? Go for it. Can I just take over? Yeah, 3525 North Fraser Street. Go up there. Uh, get ben. ben will take you on a tour. He does a couple of tours a day. Tell Keith, tell the whole gang up there. We said, hey, they got the, the gravy gang, the Pass Gravy flag right there. Go take a picture with it. Send it to us at Pass Gravy Pod, but make sure to mark your calendars. Uh, not this weekend, but next. Saturday, December 16th, the 10th annual Christmas Spooktacular. It's been 10 years we've been doing this shit. It's also our 2023 Gravies Awards. Sunset Brewing Company, 3525 North Fraser Street, up in Conroe at Sunset Star BC and at Sunset Star Brewing Co. on Twitter and Instagram. If you're drinking a Sunset Star at any point in your life, tag them, tag us. We're at Pass Gravy Pod. Let them know you're supporting the people, supporting the podcast. Sunset Star Brewing Company, the official beer sponsor of the 2023 Gravies Awards and of Pass the Gravy. Um, I guess we I was waiting for an intro. We don't have an intro there, but since we're talking Southern Star, since I'm excited about Southern Star, I've got one of my uh in the woods. I don't normally drink during during the week, but it's a special day. It's a special day. So I'm gonna pour myself a nice little into the woods Lord Rye Ale right now from Southern Star Brewing Company. Gonna gonna get in a nice little mindset because we've got some gravies nominees to announce. Now I did post on our Instagram. I posted some of the ones that were not for gravy gangers, really. Like they're, you know, we had some silly ones. I feel like we not, we haven't really done like cr- weird ones. I thought this year it'd be kind of fun to do some like just random ones and kind of like, oh hey, I remember that happening. That was kind of wild. So uh, we're gonna do some weird ones. We posted those on Instagram, and uh, maybe we'll vote for those the week of. But uh, let's get let's get right into it. The 2023 Gravies Awards nominations. We'll start with some uh, some lesser ones before we get to the Gravy Gang ones. Uh, this is also going to be one of those things uh, maybe you want to watch our, on our YouTube. YouTube.com slash <laughs> the Gravy Podcast or just search past Gravy Podcast on YouTube. Watch along with us. You can maybe wear a suit. It'll be like your uh, like your the Hollywood actors and actresses when they get Grammy nominations. So they're like, oh my goodness, I got a Grammy nomination. That's amazing. And if you're at work, just pause your headphones real fast or, and just be like, hey, just got nominated for a Gravy Award. Tell people every time that you got nominated for a Gravy Award. I love when you guys in your profiles on Twitter and Instagram have like your gravies, nom- your, your the wins that you've had at the Gravies Awards. I always think that's cool as shit. Uh, you guys are awesome. But we'll get to you guys right now. Let's start with some of the uh, the newer categories that we've done. Um, the athlete of the year we're going to do. We've done other ones before. I think athlete of the year, that can stick around. Now, a lot of people do athlete of the year. And they're like, okay, well, let's just, like, who's the best at ball? We're a little bit outside the box kind of guys. We're, we're more, what can we say that you did or we're supposed to do? Or did you just fuck someone over and that's why we like you? Who knows? Some of these are very biased categories. It doesn't matter. First nominee of athlete of the year, Jacob deGrom. Pitcher for the Texas Rangers, got paid a billion dollars, got hurt very early in the season, did not play very much, still won a ring. Hell of a fucking, hell of a fucking year for him, wasn't it? I mean, it was basically the exact same year he has every year, except it ended with a ring this time. So still pretty sick for him. Yeah, still sick. So uh, Jacob deGrom, he's a nominee, also a nominee this year for Athlete of the Year. Brittany Griner. From Russian prison to maybe which was maybe the most the the most notable trade of the last year. She goes plays in the WNBA right after being a Russian prisoner. Nominee for athlete of the year. Also, Travis Hunter, cornerback, wide receiver for the University of Colorado. Remember when he played both both sides of the ball for like a month and we were like Colorado was the talk of town? It was Remember amazing. That? that was cool. Let's not forget that. That was a cool part of the year. The first three weeks of like the September. season were so fun for them not not so much sense but that's how you get that's how you get gravy's nomination um also if anybody wanted to tag any of these people let them know um joey chestnut let's not forget joey chestnut joey c every year fourth of july we know what we're watching it's joey chestnut winning another fucking mustard belt crushing dogs he won it for like the billionth time in a row um joey chestnut nominee for athlete of the year also nominee for athlete of the year my boy america's favorite italian tommy devito so Italian. He's, he's an Italian. He's a hero. <laughs> he steps in. He's two and zero as star in the NFL. Great guy. Great story. Just fucking 
Gabagool. Gabagool. He's America's Italian. Tommy DeVito, Athlete of the Year nominee. And then our final nominee for Athlete of the Year is Florida State quarterback and injured Jordan Travis. Because if it wasn't for him, you could argue Florida State's in the college football playoff. He is the reason they got fucked. Him getting hurt is the reason that they are not in the college football playoff, according to the committee, I guess. So, Jordan Travis, we're going to give you a uh, a nominee for Athlete of the Year. So, congratulations to Jacob DeGrom, Brittany Griner, Travis Hunter, J- Joey Chestnut, Tommy DeVito, and Jordan Travis on your nominees for a- nominations for Athlete of the Year. Next up, we got Problem of the Year. A gravy award for Problem of the Year. Now, we talk about a bunch of shit all throughout the year on the podcast, and I picked some of the topics that I just felt like we're reoccurring or who are some of the biggest issues we have facing us currently. And um, we'll start off. Our first nominee is AI slash robots, because I mean, I feel like every other week, at least if not every week, there is something like this is bad. This is bad. We shouldn't be doing that. And I've been telling you guys for years, we got to be watching out. AI is going to come. They're going to kill us all and take over AI robots nominee for problem of the year. Also a nominee is aliens. Literally this year, the government was like, yeah, we got some aliens shit. Uh, yeah, there's some real ones. They're real. They, they basically told us that aliens were real. And then Mexico was like, oh, so we got some bods. that Were they cake or were they not cake? We'll debate about that later. But like Mexico brought out some bodies. So like aliens, very much, very much in the news this year. Very much a problem if they're bad. Also a problem this year. Another nominee for problem of the year. Whales attacking boats. That's a new thing that's kind of been happening over the last year. Like, what the fuck? Orcas are just like, hey, see that boat? No fucking way. Let's take it down. And they're just fucking boats up. They're fucking they're boats up. They're excited about the Huge Aquaman problem movie. to have. Guess so. They're Guess getting so. a little ballsy. Huge problem to have. So uh, whales attacking boats. Yeah, problem of the year. Uh, problem of the year nominee. Chinese spy balloons. Remember that weird week? We were like, what is this thing that's just floating? And then we popped it. And we're like, it's a Chinese spy balloon. Fuck. Why are the Chinese spying us? That's a problem. Bad. We don't want that. How happening. bad are things going um, in China that they're using balloons? Right. What are they? What are they? What are they up to? They thought Big we just wouldn't see it. And then our final nominee for problem of the year, I would say, this is my favorite, my front runner. I would say, if you gave, if, if I was handing out this word, the Giants not being good, it's ruining my life. It's ruining my life. The Giants not being good this year is absolutely ruining my life. Um, so that is, that is another nominee for problem of the year. So congratulations to AI slash robots, aliens, whales, tacking boats, Chinese spy balloons, and the giants not being good for your nominations for problem of the year. Our next nominees are going to be great gravies awards nominees for meme of the year. Now these were some fun ones to put together a lot of them in this category, but we'll start off. This was a January meme, the Tennessee cop lady that slept with like her whole department and then her husband took her back and then she was just the he took her back team player here's this girl's face all right i think he did initially in the story i read it was like january very beginning of the year but the the lady cop meme that's out there um next nominee is the just hanging around now i tried to kind of include the gif ones there were some (laughs) that like you you gif over stuff and like it just played I almost included the Michael Scott holding the speaker up, but I didn't really know if that would have made the cut and I didn't want to be super biased. But um, the just hanging around, it's got Beetlejuice from the Howard Stern show. And the guy's like, what are you doing? And it's him. What? Nothing. Just hanging around. And just like, if you see his face, like it's an easy meme to do. I really like that one. That one was a lot of funny. A lot, a lot of fun this year. Um, and then uh, Kevin James, a nominee for meme of the year. Don't even have to say anything really. It's just Kevin James with that smirk. That's that the only one. Here. Verbal memes are usually hard to describe anyway, but the Kevin James one, that's literally all you have to – Kevin James, everybody knows what we're talking Ke- about. It's Kevin James. It's Kevin James. <laughs> um, the next nominee for meme of the year, Mexican aliens. Remember, I, I just talked about aliens being a problem when Mexico was like, yo, we got bodies. And then it was the is it cake memes were kind of one of them. <laughs> and then there were a lot of other ones. Um, so Mexican alien memes, Titanic submarine memes, a nominee for, for meme of the year, because th- that was a hot month whenever that happened when the, all those people died, like it was like a terrible thing that happened. People died, but we we're like, let's go to memeing. And that's what, that's what the internet's for. Cause if you can't laugh, you'll cry. Um, also 
a nominee for meme of the year is Pedro Pascal eating a sandwich. That's just <laughs> it applies to a bunch of random situations. It was funny all throughout the year. Um, next up is the he's not real plain lady. They're just freaking out. Like, he's not real. That motherfucker over there is not real. And just her pointing. That was a great. It was, the, it was the cat and other lady meme. But uh, it was just an updated version of it. But he's not real plain lady. You can go to our Instagram to go see this. Nom- like If you want to go see like, oh, this is that meme they're talking about. All on our Instagram. We have our, our um, non-Gravy Gang members um, awards and nominees at least. So we wanted you guys to listen or watch so you could get and know if you were in it, you know? Um then uh, our final nominee for meme of the year is Carmi from the bear, just sitting on the countertop doing nothing in his little chef outfit. And it was like, I remember like Thanksgiving, it's like me showing up half drunk to Thanksgiving, waiting on the Turkey, even though I did absolutely nothing to contribute. It's just him sitting there watching like killer meme, the bear meme right there. Nominee for meme of the year. So your meme of the year, gravy award nominees, the Tennessee lady cop, just hanging around, Kevin James, Mexican aliens, Titanic submarine, Pedro Pascal eating a sandwich, the He's Not Real Plain Lady, and the Bear. This is a shorter list of nominees. The War of the Year gravy this year. The nominees are. I think this is my Russia favorite versus one. Versus Ukraine. This is my favorite yeah, category. Yeah, I mean, this is we're an edgy podcast. We have a War of the Year gravy award. Um, yeah, Russia, Ukraine. I mean that we sent we sent Ukraine a lot of money. I feel like that's been going on the longest this year. That's been uh, in the news for there. How many people do you know that have Ukraine flags in their their Twitter bios? Huh? There you go. Not so as many as I used to. They're supporting. All because they're supporting. But uh, Russia versus Ukraine nominee for War of the Year. The war in the Middle East. The Palestine, Israel, Hamas. See, I think I think you have to call it the Israel Palestine conflict because the war in the Middle East is just pretty general. But also like, not at the same time. Well, no, I because mean, there's always been a war in the Middle East. It's just this time it's not us. Yeah. But is it the war of the year? I don't know. I, I guess know. So. it kind of came right on now. late. kind of came on late. Uh, um, it's the war of right now, but it's the war of the year. Who knows? And our final nominee for war of the year is the war on drugs. No word on who's winning that. <laughs> but our... Congratulations to Mexico, uh, Russia. Yeah, I guess the cartels. (laughs) Congratulations to Russia versus Ukraine, the war in the Middle East and the war on drugs for being our nominees (laughs) for war of the year. Now it's not war. But it's like right before war, it's fight. Fight of the year. The Gravy's Award nominees for fight of the year. Go to Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. That didn't really happen. But remember, remember, I was going to be sick. They're gonna fight. They're gonna fight each other. Martial arts, and then the, in the yeah, Colosseum, they're gonna do it in like Rome. Yeah, in the Roman Coliseum, because Elon's like, I don't God, know, that would have been so awesome. But of all the money in the world, we could just do it there. Uh, but that didn't happen. But still nominated for fight of the year. Um, my personal favorite fight of the year: the Alabama dock fight, the Montgomery Alabama boat dock <laughs> fight. Um, those asshole dudes. Um, tried to jump a dock employee and then it turned into like a race fight and then people were swimming across the dock to go and fight and then people were getting hit with chairs people were getting thrown in the dock it was everything you want in a fight video and more and it just kept going the Alabama dock fight I think about it probably once or twice a week just because it was that good of a fight Um, that's nominated, nominated for fight of the year also nominated for fight of the year is Kid Rock versus Bud Light Remember that? It was a, it was a short one. It was a short one because he did drink Bud Light later, but like yeah, it was like two weeks later. <laughs> he shot Bud Light. He also shot Bud Light though. So well, he won that, that was, battle, but he lost the war. There maybe maybe it's a quick war. Um, Not all wars have to be long. That's true. A short war. Um, also nominated for fight of the year, Barbie versus Oppenheimer. Remember the Barbenheimer weekend? Mm-hmm. What are you going to see? I I still haven't seen yeah. either. I haven't. I haven't even decided who's Same. won this war for me. Same. Yeah, it's a tie in my books. Um, and then finally, our last nominee for fight of the year is our queen, Britney Spears versus freedom. Because we freed Britney last year, and this year she has really been testing it. I feel like she's dancing with knives. She's mostly, it's mostly she's just dancing. I don't want to penalize anybody for dancing. And I think Britney's winning this battle. 
I think Britney's winning this fight with freedom right now because she's still free. But I think she's mental health Britney, is Britney kicking is her free. ass. She, but she's still with. Well, it's not Britney versus mental health. It's Britney versus freedom, and Britney <laughs> is winning the the fight on freedom right now. So congratulations to our fight of the year nominees: to Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, Alabama Doc fight people, Kid Rock versus Bud Light, Barbie versus Oppenheimer, and Britney Spears versus freedom. Um, next up, the bitch of the year award. I feel like we needed one where we just, you know, we need a bitch of the year. All right. Well, Lebr- LeBron wouldn't like this category. Well, he doesn't like being so casual with the B word. Actually, you know what? Actually, makes sense. A- add him in. Add him in. Well, I, he is. He's already a candidate. He's already a nominee. Oh, I missed that earlier today. He told Ime Udoku of the uh, the Rockets coach. He was like, he was like, stop being a little bitch. Get up. He's he's an all time flopper, like like all world flopping team. And he can do whatever he wants if he's hitting anybody else. But if they come back on him, he's going to act like he was shot. Um, and then he said he doesn't use the B word, even though there's actual footage of him using the B word multiple times. Also can't read, reads books upside down. Um, just, you know, he's, he drinks wine around kids. He's a, he's a bad example. And he's not Michael Jordan. He's a fake goat. LeBron James, bitch of the year. Doesn't use the B word, but he does use the B word. Yeah, Doesn't like it I thought we were doing him. a different one. My bad. <laughs> but because of that, he has been nominated for Bitch of the Year at the Gravies. Also nominated for Bitch of the Year, Kyler Murray. Fucking bitch. Couldn't even, couldn't even start, couldn't even start the fucking season because he had bitch. a injury. You want to call it an injury? All right. He's still short. Still can't make throws. Still not able to get it done. He's lost a step. He's cursed. What do I gotta say? Kyler Murray, bitch. Nominee for Bitch of the Year. Then also, we got Victor Wimbenyama, the forward for the Spurs, number one overall draft pick in the NBA draft. He was celebrating not, or he was celebrating when the Rockets didn't get the number one pick because he did not want to go to the Rockets. So fuck him. He's an enemy for life. He's a bust. He's just uh, waiting to be a bust. He's too skinny, Mm -hmm. too tall to be as big as he is. He's going to break all of his legs. He sucks. He's not going to be good in the league. He's, He's French, which shows that he's he's already basically gonna fold. Like he's they not lost like seven it. games he's in a bust. row. Yeah, I don't think, he's a bitch. None of, the, none of the greats lose seven in a row as a rookie. Doesn't happen. How do you how do you have a guy that can swat every ball away, not being able to swat the ball away? Huh? This guy's gonna be. Can you get up any he, points if you Spurs. He's gonna wish his career was Rudy Gobert. That's it. He's gonna get Go some wish. blocks. That's it. Bitch of the Year nominee, Victor Wimbanyama. Yeah. And then a the final Bitch of the Year nominee is Wheezy. She's a really good girl, and she does bark sometimes during a podcast, but she just has opinions, and she likes to share them with you guys. So Wheezy, also nominated for Bitch of the Year. So our Bitch of the Year nominees, Kyler Murray, Victor Wimbanyama, LeBron James, and Wheezy. And then our final... I, I thought that one gravy. was going to be... I, when you first said it, I was like, wow, he really went with that as the title of it. I thought... I guess we didn't end up throwing the Jada Pinkett category in, but I thought that's where you're going. Oh with it. yeah, like, we wow, he's 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 coming out strong with bitch of the year on it. We, <laughs> we had some other ones, but we, yeah, uh, we had to narrow it down. Um, we didn't have enough for that category. Last, she was a landslide winner. Yeah, last one we got in this section of them before we get into uh, so the big awards, the Gang of the Year. Mm-hmm. Gangs need awards too. I feel like they don't. You never see like Gang of the Year. You always see like police department of the year, but gang of the year. Let's let's give them some awards. Um, our nominees for gang of the year, the Bloods, obviously. You can't have the Bloods be nominated without the Crips. Can't offend them. I feel like you can't have the the Bloods and Crips without the Latin Kings being nominated. So they're obviously also nominated. Um, MS thirteen also nominated, and our final nominees for gang of the year. It's the gravy gang because we don't need violence in the gravy gang. It's all love. And that's my favorite kind of gang is the gravy gang. So congratulations to the 2023 gravy or the 2023 gang of the year nominees, the Bloods, Crips, Latin Kings, gravy gang, and MS 13. All right. Drum roll, please, everybody. Now it's time to really get into the actual gravies awards. We got the trophies back. There was a supply chain thing last year. Our golden microphones 
looked a little different. The regular golden microphones are back. So if you want a if you want a gravy last year, then it's like a it's a novelty. Well, not a novelty one. It still counts. Collector's like, item. That was the year there was. Yeah, you'll always remember like, hey, they didn't have the regular awards. They couldn't make them then. The gravies awards are back. You will win these. There's uh there's two other trophies that we will be giving away that are not these gravies awards, but uh, we'll show you those as they come. Let's start off with our Rookie of the Year nominees for your 2023 Gravies Awards. The 2023 nominees for Rookie of the Year. You got to be listening within the last year, and I feel like if you start late enough in the year, I just roll it over. It's like um, basically uh, a, a rookie getting called up in the middle of the season, but you get your, your full rookie season the following year. And this is the first time this has ever happened. Our two nominees for Rookie of the Year are married, and it's Quentin and Angie Hughes. Quentin and Helly Hughes, you guys are our nominees for Rookie of the Year. Is it going to be Quentin? Is it going to be Angelica? Helly? Angie? I don't know which one she prefers, but I'm going to call her Angelica, Angie, Helly all the way through. But um, is it going to be is it going to be her? Is it going to be him? Somebody, I was divided. Somebody sleep on the couch that night. Loser has it's going to be like couch, when though. we're just calling it here. It's like the car stickers where one kid goes to AM and one goes to UT. They're going to have to get I one for the back of theirs. It. You have to make that and then you have to drive around with it until the spectacular leaves. Um, so, congratulations <laughs> to Quentin and Angie Hughes. You are both our nominees for Rookie of the Year. Now, we move on to the Gravy Gangster I love Award. This one. And I wanted to put like a little follow up of like who, why they got nominated for Gravy Gangster. Where it's like, there's a lot like they can make you a Gravy Gangster. You're in the Gravy Gang. You're obviously a Gravy Gangster. But like, there's things that are more gangster than others. And we'll start off with our first nominee, the Gravy Gangster Award. Brett Brandon. He got arrested back. Uh, it was I mean June, the summer. I feel like it was at Buzzfest. He got arrested after Buzzfest. He had a pass the gravy tattoo on his face in his mugshot. In his mugshot. He has our logo and podcast name on his face. People that look at mugshot sites were sending them to me, be like, "Bro, somebody's got a fa- got a face tattoo of your podcast." I'm like, "Well, it's a, it's a temporary tattoo, but still cool, coolest <laughs> mugshot I've ever seen." And I would say, like, mugshot of the year. We don't have a gravy for it, but like nominees are Donald Trump and Brett Brandon. Brett Brandon beats Donald Trump in mugshot of the year, I think. It was close. So but, congratulations yeah. on your early Gravies Award win. Um, but yeah, nominee for Gravy Gangster of the Year, Gravy Gangster Award. It's Brett Brandon getting arrested with a pass of gravy tattoo. That makes you pretty gravy gangster right there, buddy. Our next nominee for the Gravy Gangster Award, Jordan Welch. Jordan Welch in the machine. He got wasted at a golf tournament with some gravy gang, <laughs> threw up, passed out, had himself a day. We've all been there. Dre- Dave Jenkins will get you. They'll get you. They'll get you. He's pretty gangster. Um, next up, our next nominee for the Gravy Gangster Award, Tessa Goriance. Tessa G. She drives all the way from fucking Austin to all of our live events. I think this is going to be the the third year in a row she's driven in for the spooktacular. She drove in for our little gravy pool party we had earlier in the year. She drives in all the time. She's awesome. We love her. She listens from Austin. Comes in. Brings us beer that her husband makes. She's the best. Always is buying the past the gravy merch. We love you, Tessa. You are gangster as fuck for following us everywhere. Tessa G, nominee for Gra- Gravy Gangster Award. Our next Gravy Gangster Award nominee is Bro Brad. He spends like a million dollars a year on every time you go to a Rod Ryan Show golf tournament and there's a gravy hole. That's Bro Brad. That just drops a couple thou. On uh on, on a sponsorship hole because he's an awesome dude, gangster as fuck, bro. Bro, Brad nominee for Gravy Gangster Award, and then our final nominee for the Gravy Gangster Award is our boy Josh Tree Coddle because he violates OSHA regulations daily to make sure that he can consume this podcast. He's <laughs> supposed to be welding shit. Pretty sure you're not supposed to have headphones in. He doesn't give a fuck. He's a gravy gangster. Rules don't matter to him. Rules don't matter to him. Josh Tree, you a straight up gangster for that, bro. So our Gravy Gangster Award nominees, again, to recap, Brett Brandon, Jordan Welch, Tessa Goriantz, Bro Brad, and Josh 
tree. Congratulations to all of you. Moving on, we have our Darlin' Like a Marlin Award. It's the most darling of all the awards, they say, of any award season. Uh, the Darlin' Like a Marlin Award nominees are going to be Alex O., Danielle Weston, Melissa Hyde, Ashley Wilkins, Glamour Perry, and Tessa Goriant. Tessa G. Get another nominee here. Darlin' Like a Marlin Award nominees, Alex O., Danielle Weston, Melissa Hyde, Ashley Wilkins, Glamour Perry, and Tessa Goriant. Congratulations to all of you. Moving on, I have, uh, I got to get our, our next one. This is one of the special awards that we started doing. This is the I Love You Man Award. And um, as you saw last year, if you don't remember, Melissa Hyde won it because we love Melissa. Melissa so much. Hyde, I Love You Man Award. We still love her. And she has it, I believe, hanging on her mantle. She has it still hanging on her mantle. This Sitting. is the I Love You Man Award right here. You gotta be watching the YouTube. You gotta watch the YouTube version, guys, if you want to see all the cool clips. This is the I Love You Man Award. It's a little heart, cool little glass heart, and uh, it looks fancy as fuck. You can display it anywhere. But um, the nominees for the I Love You Man Award this year: Jordan Welch, Alex O, Mikey Hall, Josh Tree, and Tessa. Gorians. It's three straight nominations for Tessa Gorians right there in case anybody's keeping track. The I Love You Man Award. Jordan Welch, Alex O, Mikey Paul, Josh Treecoddle, and Tessa Gorians. Congratulations to all of you guys and gals. And I'm putting this up so I don't lose it because all of my stuff is all kind of thrown together. Just got to get this from here to the spectacular. And then it's someone else's fault. Then it's someone else's fault. <laughs> all right. Our next award we're going to be giving nominations for this is a stacked one there's a there's a ton of people and this is one of those that like there's actual like metrics and then it's also based on on the quality of what we get it's the best answers question asker award i also like when we used to do the cameos and we'd get people to to read those best answers question asker always threw them off because it's a weird way to like phrase a, an award but the best answers questions asker gravy award nominees to laundry list real fast. So get ready, gang. Skylar Lester. Back again. Defending champ, I believe. Glamour Perry. Todd Voss. Quentin Hughes. Danielle Weston. Jordan Welch. Alex O. And David Ruiz. So a lot of you guys... Like, like, if you listen to each episode, you hear it. There's the frequent flyers, the people that, that are getting a lot of answers questions in. If you send us a bunch and they're good, we're going to pepper them in. We're going to keep mo- putting them in. A lot of times, like, we've had, we have repeats sometimes. And there's nothing. I'm not knocking anybody when we don't get to yours or if we take a while to get to yours. But it's just, you know, sometimes there's better questions that are going to go to the top. And uh, some of you guys are just absolutely nails. And these are, I think, in, in our opinions, these are the the nominees for the best answers questions. So Skyler Lester, Glamour Perry, Todd Voss, Quentin Hughes, Danielle Weston, Jordan Welch, Alex O, and David Ruiz. Congratulations on your nominations. You got three more awards to give nominees for. And these are, I guess, did you say these are the three biggest? I don't know. I think they're all important in their own way. We'll start with the Woman of the Year Gravy Award. And the nominees for the Woman of the Year. Glamour Perry. Melissa Hyde. Tessa Goriantz. Her fourth nomination right there. Kenya Valdez, Danielle Weston, and Ashley Wilkins. That, that again, is your nominations for Woman of the Year. Glamour Perry, Melissa Hyde, Tessa Goriantz, Kenya Valdez, Danielle Weston, and Ashley Wilkins. Oh, I did not mean to not include Ashley or uh, Alexis. Garcia, I don't know why her name is not on there. It is on my other sheet that I was looking at too. Alexis Garcia, she does fucking write in every goddamn week. Uh, Alexis Garcia nominated for Woman of the Year. Also, oh no, that's not that's not nominated. My bad. I'm looking at like I'm looking at two things. I have one on like a notes app thing, and then I'm also looking at this, so I keep getting this Um Jesus Christ, right, man, hold it. Our together. nominations. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Two more <laughs> nominees. So two two more awards. Our man of the year gravy nominees. These are the man of the year candidates. All right. Raymundo Benavides, 
Raymundo Benavidez, Brett Brandon, Alex O, Mikey Paul, and Quentin Hughes, the nominees for Man of the Year. Raymundo Benavidez, Brett Brandon, Alex O, Mikey Paul, and Quentin Hughes. And that means we've got just one more award to give the nominations for, and that is, I would say, the biggest award. It's the MVP, the 2023 MVP. We got a new trophy. I think we've had like six of these. I feel like every time we've done a Gravy's Awards, there's always been a different one. This is the newest one, and I would say the biggest one probably, and it's it comes custom with a little engraved thing. There's MVP past the Gravy Podcast 2023 on it. Um, So you will win this if you are the MVP. Our nominees for the Gravy's MVP of 2023 are the defending MVP from last year, Raimundo Benavidez. Only one person ever has repeated as MVP. Only one person even has multiple MVPs ever at the Gravies Awards. Raimundo, could he go back to back? We'll see. Raimundo Benavidez nominee for MVP. Melissa Hyde is also nominated for Gravies MVP, as is Todd Voss who has won the MVP award before. So this would be his second win. Josh Treecottle has two MVP wins in his career. Todd Voss would match him with this one if he wins it. Todd Voss, nominee for MVP. Also, MVP nominee is Alex O. Try to look for his first MVP award ever. Alex O, you are nominated, my friend. Also nominated is Glamour Perry. She's been weighing in on everything. She's been helping out with a lot of stuff all throughout the year. Glamour Perry nominated for the MVP award. And last but not least, Brett Brandon, the face tattoo guy. Brett Brandon, nominee for MVP at the Gravies Award. So our 2023 Gravies Awards MVP nominees. One final time. Raimundo Benavidez, Melissa Hyde, Todd Voss, Alex O, Glamour Perry, and Brett Brandon. Fellas, let's give a round of applause to all the nominees. Great job, everybody. Great job. Great job. And again, if you did not get a nomination, this is no knock on you. If you didn't get nominated for as many as you thought you might be, this is no knock on you. A lot of people participate in this podcast. I feel like we just tried to do the, the to sift through and we try and pick the people that do contribute the most. And we love you guys if you contribute none and you just listen or you just watch we're not shitting on you guys but we wanted to like we like to award the people that interact with us the most that you know some some people are out there they're they're editing videos together they're making memes for us and shit like that and it's not us asking them to do shit and that, that's that scores some points so uh congratulations to all of our gravies nominees and um rob robert we do a uh we do a, an ad for us. We tell everybody about the Pass Gravy merch store real fast. Where I put all these trophies away. Oh, about the Pass the Gravy merch store. Sure, we got excellent items on the Pass the Gravy merch. So we got the newest uh, 10th annual Christmas Pooktacular shirt that Alex is wearing. He's got it in the green version. There's the holiday sweater as well. Available in a t-shirt form too. And just a bunch of other stuff that, that we have on there too. Well, as well as the thank you, like gravy bag shirt, the, you know, PTG TV that's maybe related to some other thing. Uh, what else? We have shorts. Shorts were a new addition with this new uh, company that we've got. We were able to offer some new items. We've got sticker packs in there too. And you want to order by the 8th. So in two days, you got to order by the 8th to make sure that you get your things in by Christmas. And I think I'm going to be also adding in an old one, an old Christmas sweater, a gravy gang on it. going to be adding that in too. So even more items in the store available soon. You got to make sure you get them by order by 12-8 to get them by Christmas. Pat, which, which shirt did you order? You ordered one too, did you? I got the, uh, the, the new sweater. The new sweater, the uh, the one that's got like uh, sound waves on it. That's so fucking cool. Or no, no, no. I got the shirt. I got the shirt. The sound wave shirt. Yeah, it's available on both. Yeah. Because sometimes it is a little warm here on for Christmas. Maybe you don't just, do I, a sweater. You, have, you get I, options. I have so many hoodies and sweaters right now. I got to go through them and like clear out. I didn't have room for any more right now. 
shirt fucking all day every day baby t-shirt guy and you, you can donate to the bobby jokes fund which is just a little christmas bonus for our buddy bobby jokes or don't give it to the bobby jokes fund that's also available as well or don't but you can just an option um so passagreemerch.com there's a lot of things in life that are not cool and passagree merch is always going to be cool so don't worry if you're in a not cool situation, head over to passthegravymerge.com. Pass the gravy merge.com. And again, order by the 8th, December 8th, to guarantee that you're going to get it in by Christmas. And like I'm telling you, like the turnaround was really fast. I ordered Thursday, got it Tuesday. Like you'll you'll get your spooktacular stuff by the spooktacular if you order right now, too. So pass the gravy merch.com. Pass the gravy merch.com. Let us know what you got, too. Send us a screenshot. We can black out all the stuff you don't want us to see, but send us a screenshot of your order and uh, we'll give you a shout out on the podcast next week. Pass the gravy merch.com, the official sponsor of the Not Cool segment. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. All right. Um, the Not Cool segment is basically a way to vent every single week. That's how we started it. And you guys can participate in that with us if you're watching us on youtube or if you are listening to us wherever you listen to podcasts uh make sure to subscribe to us on wherever you listen to podcasts even if you're watching the youtube subscribe to the youtube if you're listening subscribe to the podcast if you're watching give us clicks on both um if you have a not cool hit us up on twitter at past great pod use the hashtag ptg not cool and uh, just anything that makes you say hey man that's not cool throughout the week we'll pick some of the best ones that you guys and gals send in each week and we will share them with you guys we have a bunch of them from you guys this week and uh, we'll start off with a uh, multiple gravy nominee he is alex o at alex mcthunder one on twitter and alex o says his not cool is he ordered a sausage biscuit at jack in the box and they gave him one without a sausage patty on he sent a picture and it's literally just like a bun cheese and a bun bullshit is there egg on it too i couldn't tell but either way, yeah, that's that's because that's one even bullshit. like because <clears throat> I've said it a bunch of times better, on here. But it's still bullshit. You, you like you got to check the bag, but that's when you check the bag, you see the sandwich. You don't open everything up, <clears throat> so you'll never you'll never know if they fucked that. That's uh, it's just brutal. I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah, that sucks, dude. T's and P's, bro. T's and P's. Um, all right. Next up, we got Cruz Garcia. He's at my name Craig 08 on Twitter, and Craig says or Cruz says. His not cool is being an hour late to pick up my son because of traffic. That sucks. That does suck. I fucking hate traffic so much. It's the worst. Um, Jordan Welch. At J underscore Welch 2795. His not cool is that he has to miss the Christmas spooktacular this year because of stupid work. He said stupid. I did not call his work stupid. But yeah, it is stupid that they're making work during the spooktacular. Don't they know it's spooktacular day? Isn't it like a national holiday? I thought it was. It should be. It By the way, Spooktacular starting starting at like 12.30. 12.30, we're going to roll with this bad boy. We're going to try and run through it. All right? We're going to have a good pod. It's going to be a good show. Good It'll show. be a fun everybody. time. Always a fun remember, time. Remember, holiday formal. Holiday formal. Um, we'll miss you there, though, Jordan. And if you win anything, um, either designate somebody to accept your award on your behalf, or you will not be guaranteed that you will get your award. That is another... Thing. We are bad about making sure that people get their trophies and cannot guarantee that if you're not there that you will get your trophy. There have been multiple times where somebody else ended up with someone else's trophy. And I was like, bro, I, I, I only control what I say and who can come get it after that. It is not it's out of my hands. It's the Wild West over here, right? We say it all the time. Um, the Gravy Gang's a lawless bunch, man. You, lawless you leave bunch. a trophy you laying around. You knew that when you joined. Um, Texas Cat Daddy a.k.a. Brandon Davis. He's at a stream of cream on Twitter. He said his not cool is having a package delivered to his front office that they then held on to and told him that they didn't receive until he went down there and had to physically find the package. Yeah, that sucks, dude. Deal with apartment complexes. So the way Brandon sent a whole video for, like, I get that it was wordy. It's easier to read words than it is to, like, decipher a video. Basically, like, they have those lock boxes where you get a package and you get a key and your bet your thing, and sometimes they're full. Sometimes he said that the apartments are just lazy. But he was having a whole back and forth between the, like, oh, we did deliver it. And then the apartments be like, no, we didn't get anything. And then him going back to whoever delivered be like, no, we did deliver it. And then he's doing this whole thing, and then he goes in there and finds his package. That's annoying. 
That's yeah, it. just laying on the ground. You can, like, you can see the name of fucking person on a, on a package. Just go put it where it is. Um, not cool as fuck, Brandon. But uh, T's and P's, brother. T's and P's. Um, try to race through these. They were just a bunch. But um, next one is from Melissa Hyde, another gravy nominee. Wait, and see, this is how you get nominated for the gravies, guys. Um, at Mel Hyde myself on Twitter, she says, "Was at the car wash cleaning my windshield. Or her not cool is." When you're at the car wash cleaning your windshield and your boobs accidentally laid on your horn, no big deal until people start staring at you because you have your music so loud and you didn't know. Oops. Congrats <laughs> to Melissa on having huge tits. Like that's like a <laughs> like, oh my dick is so big. It hit the gas. Shout out to Michael. Paying attention. Shout out to Michael, Mister Hyde over there. You have fun with those. You have fun with those. <laughs> You get you some Mike. You get you some Mikey. Um, yeah, so sorry your tits are so big, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> that is a I funny mean, so... that is a funny occurrence though. Like like just, like we not having boobs, like I can't I can't really relate to, but like I can't imagine I can. just be like, oh shit. I've been pushing a horn down the whole time. Yeah, your dick just did it, that'd be weird though. Um, but yeah, T's and P's, but not really because they just need to have big boobs. So, so congratulations, also. Uh, boobs never go out of style. Daniel Weston, this is a, this is a pretty serious one. Daniel Weston at Danny underscore Weston, and I'm not it's pretty serious. It's a very serious one. But Danielle says, my dad had a stroke. He tried to sleep it off. He's a tough man. He's doing okay now. It just sucks to see him like this. I did talk to her a little bit over the weekend and. Uh, she uh she said that he, he was doing all right. So uh we're thinking about you. I know a lot of the gravy gang reached out to her on that tweet. But yeah, it's uh it's really serious, it's really scary. And uh we love you. If you need to talk to anybody, you know the gravy gang's always got your back and uh we're here for you. And your family. We love you, Danny. We love you, mm-hmm. Danny, and uh hang in there. Uh last listener, viewers submitted not cool. It's from Ashley Wilkins that Buster Healer Mix on Twitter. And Ashley says her not cool is AT and T U for Uverse can't watch cbs anymore because of contract disputes could not watch the sec championship game it affects football and amazing race i have to figure out the whole antenna thing so if you have at t u verse i guess they lose they lost their contract with cbs i don't understand like how do you ha- how are you a cable company that like, doesn't have a contract with cbs That's yeah like crazy. it's one of the major four i thought you didn't even need cable for that like I thought that was just that that came with it because it's a basic channel a that you can get with an antenna. Yeah, and like not. and that sucks too because if you log into like Paramount to watch it, I think Par- or yeah, Paramount CBS, right? It has to link yeah. to your cable so then it'll go no blocked out. Or maybe it'll work right. that way, but I think it still blocks it out. It, that's that's absolute bullshit. That's un-American to not be able to watch the SEC championship. It is un-American. They should be fined by the. Uh, uh, damn it! Never mind. I don't want to get the government involved. They'll fuck it up worse. Yeah, that'd be bad. Peace and peace. Fuck them. Peace and peace. Uh, um, that does suck. And it, like, also like an like an ad on not cool for like the week before is like when they were about to not keep their contract going. I was trying to like have the Texans game on to monitor, and they just had that big fucking bar in the middle like, oh, like yeah. at the top of the screen it was like I don't even have a team to you verse motherfucker get the fuck off my screen get the fuck off my screen I'm trying to watch football here and you're trying to take up a third of the screen get the hell out of here that's how I felt about it at least assholes assholes all of them assholes but yeah it sucks Ashley it sucks so I hope that they do reach a new contract because it's like what like you call them. It's like I'm not fucking. I'm this isn't a congressman, man. I'm not calling my congressman to be like, hey, I wanted clean water for this city. It's like I pay you for fucking cable. Give me cable. Give me this. Give me this network. You can't just be like, ah, we don't do deals with CBS anymore. You can. You don't get to do that. No, give me all the shit. Give me all the shit. That's what I paid you for. That you should get less. You should get to pay less if you get less channels. Especially a football channel. That should take like yeah. half the bill off. Oh, yeah. It's the oh, whole yeah. reason for still having cable is so that you can watch live sports because there's only so much you can watch without it. You miss major games. 
if you miss major sports, they shouldn't have to pay for cable at all. It should just be free at that point. Yeah. It's bullshit. Sorry about that, Ashley. That sucks. Brutal. Just solid. No, cool. All right. I'll start with, I'll start us off. Uh, mine's a serious one, and I just feel like that way y'all can like lighten it up if y'all have not as serious ones. But mine was uh, so Weezy was throwing up on Friday, and I was kind of like, all right, whatever, maybe like sometimes Weezy, if she's had um any any like if she goes to my parents' house or Emma's parents' house, then they'll feed her chicken and rice. Like she will only eat that, or she'll eat whatever other food that my mom like. My mom will be like, oh, we had leftover bacon and eggs here. You have this and like. She she's fine with that, but then she'll come home and she like won't eat for two days because she's thinking we're gonna give her bacon and eggs if she smokes us out and doesn't eat kibble, and then she just throws up bile because she didn't eat. But then she'll eat eventually, and she's fine. And she had thrown up twice on Friday, and I was like, okay, she's trying to like I think I feel like she was eating, and then um Saturday she was fine, but she kept doing that like like a downward dog like stretch like you know you know you know what downward dog poses yeah. like the big stretches basically like she kept yeah. doing that um oh like about like holding it and i was like that's weird and so i, I kind of googled it up and, and then she she threw up again and it was pink it wasn't yellow bile it was like pink and i thought that was weird so i googled it and it looked like she had like a bunch of like symptoms of pendic- uh, or not pendicide pancreatitis pancreatitis and so i kind of started freaking out because when you go down that spiral where you're like all right what is this it's like web web md basically we're like uh oh, dogs you die immediately dogs you die immediately get ready you're like, oh fuck and so i freaked myself out I was like, all right, we're just gonna get through Saturday, see if Saturday's okay. Saturday was was pretty good. And then like she was just tired, but then like four or five in the morning on Sunday morning, she like started throwing up again. She just threw up two or three times, but like she just seemed like she wasn't comfortable. And so I took her to one of those emergency vet places that like that is adding to the not cool. Like Wheezy being not not healthy then was 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 part of it but like the 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 like angels that work at this like emergency vet clinic like that's all they, they're they're fucking absolute saints that work there because they see some shit like the time i was there like two or three dogs had to get put down and like they were getting surgery performed on them there's like operating tables it's just like a big like triage so there's like four couches that if you're waiting you can sit in there but you can see like operating tables and shit and it's like like you go to the emergency vet for emergency vet reasons and it was just like oh god and like just the sadness that was there like i was i was so like i was so sad about wheezy and i was just also like so grateful at the same time i'm like at least like i hope i'm taking her home i think i'm taking her home and it was just it was it was sad man it was really sad but those people like like there was somebody that brought uh like uh they had one of those it was one of those places you had to get buzzed into so you walk into a different room you had to get buzzed in so like they have to come let you in so there's that like waiting room kind of somebody brought a box of like cats like two cats and just left it there and left like did it say like I can't take care of these? Just like left them, and it was just like, like every like five minutes, some some more chaos happened. I was like, what is this? And Weezy got a bunch of blood work done. She had like pancreatitis or pancreatitis at that point, and they were like, if she had like people food or anything, it's not good for her pancreas. All this, she's on a bland dog food diet for life now. She can't have like treats or snacks or anything like that now. It's got to be very oh. low fat low fat and uh like gastrointestinal healthy food which also adding to the not cool i went and you have to have a prescription so the vet gave me this prescription i have to have a card to go buy food for wheezy now because it's special food and i was like all right well i don't know if she's gonna eat the dry dog food or the wet dog food let me get a case of each like let me get a bag of the dry food and a case of the canned food it was like 230 dollars for both yeah and i was just like and you, like they get you it's like do you love your dog yeah i do i want my dog to be healthy and then also this new food makes her fart and we use never a dog that farted a bunch so like that is the, the last two days have been pretty wild like they're not <laughs> well, also like part, that's probably and adjust it's, it's, she's it's adjusting food. to the food too yeah she's adjusting to the food so i'm giving her that but like she's pretty fucking <laughs> gassy now that it's boxers and they're pretty they're pretty notorious for that wheezy was like wheezy didn't even fucking fart like now she does I mean, are they audible? But, Can you hear them? A couple of them, yeah. Oh, okay, I was going to say like, maybe like the, the, the worst ones to blame it are on the, the ones. That, the worst ones are the ones that like seep out, though. Oh when yeah, like, those... like that when you hear that, you're like that's not going to be good. That's going to be a bad one. We're getting a couple <laughs> of those, which I, it's, uh, I think it's because it's because we switched the food. But really, yeah, like that's, it always you happens. can't like not 
when your dog's sick and you're not able to talk to your dog, you're not able to tell your dog, like, I'm sorry, I got you. I love you. We're going to be okay. They're just going to do this. Like, I wish that whole time. It's like, I just wish I could tell her, like, yo, they're going to have to poke you. They're going to have to take some blood. They're going to do this thing. They're going to take you away from me right now, but I'm going to be watching you through the window. And then they're going to take you and do an x-ray. And then you like, I'm going to be watching the whole time. I'm not leaving you. Like, it's like, she was, she's in that like scared mode where she's like, well, I don't know these people. I, I don't feel good. Now they're taking me away from you. And like, just having to be with your dog when all that's happening, you feel so helpless. And then like, I'm having to shove pills down her throat. Cause I'm not sure if like, I wasn't sure if she was going to eat the foods. So if we opened the capsules up and poured it on the food, it's like, if she doesn't eat the food, what's the point? So I'm having to like shove food down her, her, her like, like shove a pill in her mouth and hold her mouth closed. And so she swallows it and like, it's a whole thing and she's not loving it. And trying to get your dog that got like every day before I would leave, I would kiss him a goodbye. I would, I would tell Wheezy goodbye and I would give Wheezy a treat. And Wheezy goes through my hand every single morning. Like she knew like my hand here. Okay. Your treats here. What? Who? Fuck you dude. Where's my treat? Like to not get those treats. She's fucking pissed at me in the mornings. The look Maybe she gives me. Use, use a little week, bit of kibble like, you as a fucking treat. Bitch. You'll have to just start doing she's that. On to me. I try. I well, try I know, it. but I that'll, it, that's her treat now. Time. But just like, like she, and I didn't give Wheezy a ton of like, I wasn't feeding Wheezy like entire pieces of pizza or anything like that, but it's like, Oh, hey, I dropped a chip on the ground. You can get that. You know, yeah, like little things like that. Stuff. Like, oh, it sucks. It sucks. And, like, I feel so bad for her. And now, like, anytime she, like, stretches, I'm like, are you hurting? Is everything okay? What's going on? Like, you can't, like, monitor your dog to see, like, like they were like, well, she, she, you need to make sure she's very well hydrated. I was like, how do you make sure your dog is hydrated? Like, I can look at my piss. Is it the same with dogs? And they're like, well, you can feel her gums. And if her gums are wet... And not like like if they're if they're wet and pink, then like that that's fine. Then that means she's usually hydrated. If they're white and sticky and not wet, like that means that she's she's dehydrated. And like they also gave her like a a, a banana bag basically, where she just had like a weird hump, like an IV. So she had a hump on her back for like a half a day until it all soaked in. But we just been through it, and it sucks and it's expensive. And I love Weezy, and she's worth all the money that I'm spending. But it's just like it's it was it's been it's been a tough. Tough time with her. So pancreatitis, pancreatitis and dogs, pancreatitis and dogs. Fuck you. Not cool all the week. That's why not cool. Now you guys. I hope you'll have different. Numbers. <laughs> yeah, I've got a. Yeah, none of mine are really Let sad. So I'll, I'll just run through my. The first one's actually for my job. It's not even mine. It's uh. So like we also have the catering company that's part of it, and the address of that is our like little storage unit warehouse space that's down the road, and I kitchen? guess. It's not a ghost kitchen. We don't cook out of there. We still cook out of there. It's literally just like a couple offices and some storage area. But that's the, you know, address of the catering company. And I guess at some point the mailman. So there's a, there's an office up front, but they switched management companies a couple months ago, and now it's just locked. There's nobody ever there. And I don't mean like, oh, they're just barely. There. I mean, there's never there's never been a person. There. So the front office is locked, and I guess the mailman at some point slid some of our mail in there. So they had messaged us like, hey, you know, your rent is past due. You need to pay us the rent. And we're like, well, we've got a check for a lot of money that's sitting on the floor in your office. You need to come open it. And they're like, no, you just need to pay. And we're like, well, we're not paying until you open the office so we can get our check. And it goes back and forth for a couple of days before finally like, well, we don't have anybody because we're not even in state. Excuse me? How do you? OK, well, then we'll just never pay you. What are you going to do? Change the locks? You just right. said you, don't come, you can't come in state. It's it's just like we're, we're battling with these people to be like, you need to get somebody to come open the office so we can get our mail that's got our money in it so we can pay you. And they're just like, nope, no, we refuse to do it. It's the most baffling shit I've ever seen. Like the gate half the time doesn't work. Like if you're on the inside, the sensor won't trip. So you're just like stuck in there. And you have to like wave somebody down to just like hit the keypad and let you. It's fucking crazy. That's a whole thing that we're dealing with right now. Um, by the way, I went golfing on Saturday and I uh realized when I got home, I left my portable charger in the golf uh cart and I had no charger for my phone because you know the port's fucked up, so it has to be the one that you lay on. So I had to run to Best Buy with like one percent battery and go buy a new one because and also I, I guess I could have called like I realized it semi decently not that long after i got home and i could have called him like hey did anybody turn it in but i was just like nobody's gonna turn that in i just never even called to see if my charger was there i just abandoned it it's fucking it was like a 60 dollar charger too it's so stupid but that's just my level of laziness um 
And then my next two kind of go to – I can't go to the uh, – the. I've been talking all year, Texas State. We're going to make a bowl game. I'm going. Me and all my friends are ready. We're playing in Dallas against Rice. It's the day after Christmas. Can't go. Already I was like, well, I'm not going to be able to go. I'm going to be at my parents. Turns out probably not even going to be able to be at my parents – uh, cause I think I'm going to have to work the day after Christmas, which would normally be my day off. But like my, uh, my boss, he's, uh, he's going to like Illinois to see his wife's family for like a week. So I'm probably going to have to work New Year's Eve too, but I'm just like, all right, whatever. I got more time to figure out what I'm going to buy my mom for Christmas. No mom. I totally have it. I'll just That's get it true. to you next time I come up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's with me right now. I got wrapped. Oh, she'll know that's wrap an empty box. Like this is it. I don't wrap it. I just I get to her house. I grab one of her bags. I go to my car and I put it in the bag. It's a little tradition that we have. I do it every year. I'm like, mom, where's the bag from last year? Give it to me. <laughs> she birthed me. She knows. That works. What about you, Robert? What do you got? Uh, so Alex kind of mentioned earlier, but I went into the office yes yesterday. Uh, I had to renew my passport, and part of like the process is printing out a picture that you staple to the application. And I, I have a little stapler here, so I'm like, okay, that's not bad. But you need four staples, two on each side, and the stapler that I have doesn't go all the way through what I would need it to. Like, so I need to go further. I'm like, okay. If you're watching, if it's a little, if you're not stapler. watching. Go to our YouTube. It's yeah, it's a mini stapler. It's like an inch and a half long. Yeah, if that. And I needed to reach like over here, and and stapler. My size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, regular size. I'm like okay, well, surely there's a, a stapler at work. I texted Alex like the day before. I'm like, hey, is there no context whatsoever? I just texted him. Is there a stapler at the office? He's like, probably, but I don't know where. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I find out. Uh, I'm there yesterday. I go hang out in the studio. <laughs> The first thing I see is a stapler. Like there's a stapler right here that you see every day. He's like, oh, I didn't even know it was there. I didn't notice it. Hiding in plain <laughs> sight. You've never had to use that stapler, have you, Alex? No. So why would he know it's there? Because I mean, I, yeah. He sees and I wasn't in that room when you had asked me that. Guys don't have object permanence, dude. Like if we're not looking at it, we can't. Like if we're not looking for it, we can't see it. Even if we're looking for it, we probably can't see it. That's our dilemma in the fridge all the time. I was thinking way. about them switching ice to hardwood. That's what I was thinking about instead. <laughs> well, either way, there was a stapler. I'm like, oh, sweet. I had to like look or ask someone I don't know for a stapler. I go to use it. Stapler's broken. It's jammed. There's like two staples stuck at the part where you staple. Like I spend the next 10, 15 minutes trying to unjam it i'm like come on i just need i need two staples that's all i need you know what you could have used right then a leather a leatherman i keep one on me at all times dude it fucking that's what you should ask somebody for christmas if somebody's looking for a gift for you big like, i want a leatherman they're the most handy fucking tool yeah i really i ended up using a pen like the the underside of a pen yeah a pen's not as good a butter knife works really well obviously you don't have that at the office that's what i use used to use at work before i got the leather yeah or maybe there is a butter knife. We just, you know, we didn't notice it. Yeah, jam, jam staples. That again. Mm -hmm. Jam staples are like some of the most annoying fucking things in the world. Yeah, and then I was going to hang out with my buddy for a little bit, and then so many people were in that room. Like, okay, well, I'm in here awkwardly. I'm like, they'll be gone a little bit. It looks like it's going to be a quick thing that they got to fix. Like, nope. 15 and, minutes later. Yeah, and then more people came in. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to leave now. That would have been great if you waited for them to, like, say something that's a problem, and you could have been like, yeah. I just had to deal with a jam stapler. I know what you're talking about. You're telling me, buddy. Mm -hmm. Nothing in this office works. You think you got it bad? I had some jam staplers, man. It took me like 10 minutes. I mean, a lot of stuff in that, that station and studios do not work. So you wouldn't be that wrong mm -hmm. to say that, to be fair, at least. Uh, all right. It. Broke yeah. a sleeper and then I just couldn't hang solid. out with my buddy. Solid night. Yeah, ruined our, ruined our friend hangout. But now, now we can hang out when you make us fried chicken, right? Mm. We'll see about that. We'll see. We'll see. Pending.
mm-hmm. pending bro bro date. All right, let's move on to the final segment of the week. It's the answers segment. We like you guys weighing in on the not cool segment, but uh, we also start off with the pre-com segment where we, we give you guys our, our thoughts, our high thoughts, any ideas. We come up with business ideas. We can pitch them. We can shoot them down. We can do whatever we want. If you got any kind of high thought, a drunk thought, any kind of idea, any business pitch you want, if you want relationship advice, parenting advice, anything like that, hit your boys up at Pascal Podgies, hashtag PTG answers. We will answer all of your questions. And also, we are the best power rankers in the world. So give us five things to power rank. And we'll power rank the fuck out of them. And without a doubt, be the best power rankings of them ever done before. Uh, the answer segment is brought to you by littlemshop.com. If you're looking for some Christmas stuff around this time of year, littlemshop.com's got all your answers for you. Little m shop.com little em shop.com they're also going to give you 10 percent off your order when you use our promo code ptg69 at checkout they have retro inspired tchotchkes that's what they're known for i personally feel like they're known for their little m air fresheners best air fresheners in the biz those green trees had a long run of being like the most popular ones i really feel like little m shop is a billion times better than also a lot cheaper too they last longer they're better they just they smell better too they look cooler all of the things that little green trees don't do little limb shop does and it's cheap and affordable and awesome and you're helping your favorite podcast little limb shop.com little em shop.com promo code pgg69 at checkout get 10 percent off your order when you spend ten dollars or more you're gonna get free shipping so you get free shipping and 10 percent off your order at little m shop.com it's getting to be end of the school semester season you know you, you got your kids uh, you those the little like the little tchotchkes you want to give somebody you want to give somebody a starbucks gift card they're, they're your teacher's gonna get a billion of those give them a, a nice little customized miss whatever their last name is on a, on a keychain a little custom keychain at little shop.com you can do that they'll ship it out right away ship it out right away you can get an awesome little air freshener make their classroom smell better you get a little sticker for them get a little customized anything from compact mirrors all kinds of awesome stuff littlemshop.com a little bit of this and a little bit of that littlemshop.com littlemshop.com promo code ptg69 at checkout for 10 percent off your order at littlemshop.com if you buy anything from take a or take a screenshot tag them let them know you're supporting the people supporting the podcast they're at littlemshop and at little em tweets on twitter let them know you support the people supporting the podcast littlemshop.com promo code ptg69 at checkout for 10 percent off your order at little em shop.com the official sponsor of the answers segment well, if you just answered the question why just answer the question be honest no big deal yeah answer answer the question don't change the subject just answer the fucking question the answers 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 any questions? All right. Alex, it, uh, Our... it looks like Juan Soto is officially to the Yankees now. Is he really? That's what it's looking like on Twitter. Ever As of an hour ago, they're saying it's uh, official. So not cool for us now that up? because, damn it, now the Yankees have Juan Soto, but how the fuck are you going to pay him? Money's not real in baseball. I get it, but like you already have a billion dollars between three players. Or was yeah, that the you know who owns Rangers? baseball teams? Billionaires. I don't know, man. They had to pay that that estate tax when daddy died. Yeah, but it's still like really rich. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I, uh I still feel like you're gonna try and play some prank on me. So I'm not gonna believe it until no, it's I, official, I, official. All it, it's been official like 17 times today, but apparently an hour, like an hour ago is when I'm seeing the uh, people are tweeting out it's official. So every time I, I saw it was official, through. I saw it was not official right after that. I haven't but seen the not I'm official not. response to this one though. So yeah, it I just mean, doesn't seem like Brian Cashman. Guess, but... That's not very Brian Cashman to go out and spend money on a player. Yeah, it's, it's really out of character for the Yankees. He's not well lately. Brian Cashman under his under his tenure at least. Um, let's start with our buddy Mikey Paul at it's just Mikey P. He had a few Gravies Awards nominations just now, but uh, Mikey P says, "Should we?" No, this is not fuck. Okay, we're gonna read Mikey's first. Sorry, Glamour, where to go? With you? I, I read the wrong <laughs> one. Out of order. My, my bad. I'm dyslexic today. Mikey Paul says, "What is the difference between regular ketchup and fancy ketchup?" Fancy ketchup comes from Whataburger. Duh. I thought Heinz has fancy ketchup. Oh, do they? Okay, then it's just branding. I don't realize. I, I, 
They probably see. No, I think no. It's just branding. It's just it's just nobody makes their ketchup the same way. It's all like similar but slightly different. They just said we're going to call ours fancy. That's all it is. It's just branding. Fancy ketchup is smoother. I've never noticed. It's just it's just a different taste of ketchup. Is smoother. Is, is Heinz fancy? I, was, I feel like I saw like I've seen fancy on the bottle. I feel like tomato ketchup. I, I don't know. Does it say? I don't know. I don't think it does. I think it's just water burger, dude. Wait, is McDonald's fancy too? Maybe it's a fast food thing. The death of fancy ketchup. Yeah, no, there's a Heinz one. I mean, I'm looking at just Heinz though, and it just says tomato ketchup. It doesn't say fancy. I guess right. they make well, one too, but Heinz. I didn't know other people made it. I thought it was just Whataburger. You still, I'm still. It's just branding. It's just, it, it's a, just a different recipe. That's all it is. It's just fucking branding because they want to sell it for fifty cents more. It's like organic. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, it's fancy. Do you want fancy or not? And I don't. I want regular ketchup. I'm not a fancy guy. Dude, you know who I hate? They're the cats up people. Well, that's it's actually like, who the fuck calls condiment. it that? It's it's not the same thing. Cats up is actually a different condiment. What it's very similar to cat. I, I don't know the difference, but I'm pretty sure it's just ketchup with a slightly oh, different recipe. Shit. Cats up is it is different though. I don't you don't see it though. I don't think they make it anymore because everyone's just like, well, no, it doesn't beat ketchup. So we're just gonna carry ketchup. I had a little bit like I got a little ketchup on my finger today and I licked it off. And I was like, oh, my God, dude, I can't remember the last time I actually had ketchup. So fucking delicious, man. And nobody beats Heinz. Heinz is the best ketchup. I also like original recipe. It was an old Cisco brand. I don't think they make it anymore, though. But Heinz ketchup is the goat ketchup. I and really it, notice that it, much of a difference. I think yeah, there's, is there's not much. Kind. That that's what that's one of my things. I'm not that big of a water burger ketchup guy. Like the spicy ketchup I like and everything, but I'd rather just give me Heinz. I'll take Heinz all day. I don't understand spicy ketchup. It's like if I wanted hot sauce, I would got hot sauce. I wanted ketchup and I don't want spicy ketchup. Yeah, but like ketchup, but it's spicy. That's dope. Yeah, no, like it's I still get, just as delicious. But yeah, you just I, people like spicy shit, not Robert. So Rob, the difference Robert between regular the difference between regular and fancy ketchup is fancy ketchup just costs more. I think so. It's a fair, it's a fair answer, I feel like. So now it's fact. Good yeah. question, Mikey. All right. Glamour. Sorry we skipped yours earlier. At Glam for Life on Twitter. Glamour says, Should we trust hairdressers with short hair? This is like, can you trust a cook that's not fat? Yeah, you can. They got to be really good, though. Has a therapist. I, I mean, like all therapists have therapists. They're still like supposed to. I don't know. It's fucking weird. Uh, right, but like, if you're a therapist, do you need a therapist? It, yes. My my, my question would be, does the hairdresser's hair look good? That's that would okay. I agree because I was gonna say it's gotta look times, good. It's typically a female. I would imagine you're just you're talking about a hairdresser, uh, but it's typically like a female. If you have short hair, it's like usually like I'm picturing somebody with like maybe like a, a different colored hair, like uh you know like a green hair, but like they do a lot of work to it. They they have the cool like do it's like at an angle and all that shit. Like the bangs are wild. I don't know. I feel like as long as it looks good and like maybe not to you, but like as long as it looks like well kept and like taken care of, like yeah, trust them. And I think like I th I feel like it's supposed to be easier for females to like have less hair but like i feel like you have to style it more like it seems like more goes into it having to put the gel in it and style it every day like then just combing it and brushing it out That's also take of me but we can't forget about male hairdressers usually short hair and if you're a a, a guy and you're a hair, hairdresser i think just trust them right away they've got to be fucking really good if they got the job See, I feel like as a guy, I don't really care if it's a guy or girl cutting my hair. I can understand a girl wanting a girl to cut their hair because unless you're a dude with long hair, you you don't know what it's like. You know? I, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't really care, guy or girl either. 
I will say, uh, I think if you have a guy cutting your hair, you you're know. less likely to have a conversation. I think a guy will just be quiet with you the whole time. One or two quick little, Sometimes how you doing? doing? Yeah, you know, team's doing you well. You want this up here? You want, uh, you want, you want, what do you want in the back? Okay, also, cool. it's, it's, Thanks. it is dope when you get a woman cutting your hair, but it's also uncomfortable when, like, their boobs, like, are just on your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> it's slightly uncomfortable. You're just like, I know I'm not supposed to say anything, but like, if I turned my head to the side right now, just nipple in the face. Yeah. I see that's uncomfortable. At that point. It's not. It's not fair game. You can't do that. I think you should. Yeah, you can trust. You should trust hairdressers with short hair. As long as their hair looks good. It's and gotta be trendy. Out. Or any dude. Yeah. Yeah. And they're hairdressers because they're dressing the hair. They know what's fashionable, not you. So it looks it looks okay and well kept. That's them. That's good. All right. Uh, great question, Glamour. Our next one is from Raymundo Benavidez at Kmundo B on Twitter. I think we've got almost all gravy awards nominees in the uh, answers the answers sweat questions right now. Um that's why that's why they're the nominees. Um Raymundo so gives us our power rankings for the week. He's at Kmundo B on Twitter, and Raymundo says power rank these corrupt people slash organizations. He gives us the mafia, politicians, the college football playoff committee, the NFL, and Hollywood. I can go first if y'all are cool with that. Go for it. It's politicians, one, because like you put laws into order. So if you are corrupt, you are able to be corrupting everything. That's one. Mafia, two, because like they're built on forcing corruption. That's like literally like one of their pillars they're built on. Whether it be like just time, like time wasting and having somebody on like a, a trash job, like a like a construction job that doesn't really do anything, just shows up and hangs out, that's still corruption. But yeah, it's that that's that's uh, number two. Number three, I'd go Hollywood just because I think they get a lot of access to shit that like whatever. And I think there's a lot of like inner circles in Hollywood that like you can only succeed if you do that. So I think that's kind of corrupted. And then I mean they've also had the other scandals that have come out. We don't need to get into all that. But then four, I'm going to put the college football playoff committee over the NFL only because the NFL doesn't have boosters. The NFL doesn't have boosters. And if you don't think that everybody, every butch and every Cletus and every Jediah in Alabama that went to the University of Alabama and has an awesome job now and has a lot of money if you don't think they were calling everybody that they thought might have any connections to the college football playoff committee, be like, if you don't get fucking Saban in there, I'm telling you what, Tuscaloosa, you ain't ever, you ain't ever going to fucking see Alabama again. You ain't fucking ever going to like, they're like, it's like A&M did that shit with Jimbo Fisher was like the boosters just, they think they have, they think they are Kings because they have money. And a lot of times, yeah, a lot of money does that shit. But like, that's more dangerous than the NFL where Roger Goodell scumbag, bad dude, horrible dude. He's not got like, the dads of the Raiders players also being like, well, look, we'll give you this money. If you expand the the playoff, he's not doing that. You know? So like, I think the NFL absolutely is more corrupt. If my team is losing and I think it's because of the refs that I'm going to say that I'll move. The, this is a fluctuating power rankings right now because the giants are off of a buy right now. And I'm, I'm uh, and two wins in a row. I'm feeling happy until Monday. So like, I'm just going to say four is the college football playoff committee five is the nfl so it would go politicians it would go mafia hollywood college World playoff committee nfl yeah i'll uh i'll go next yeah politicians one and and mafia two just because like mafia they're straightforward you know what they're doing is illegal That's yeah, what they, it try, is. they try and cover it up but the base of it is illegal politicians you get one though right. because you do illegal shit when you're not supposed to be like that's you're supposed to be making the laws and be the epitome, but then you do corruption. That's more corrupt than what the mafia does. The mafia is corrupt, but that is more corrupt doing it that way. Yeah. Uh, three, three Hollywood. I mean, everybody knew about Weinstein and just didn't say anything. And even after it came out, they still wouldn't say anything. So God knows there's more. They're fucking yeah. horrible people. Uh, for college football playoff committee. 
It's just it, like all of it, really just all of college football. It is corrupt, but it's, I mean, we all understand it is. That's why like this whole shit with Michigan came out, which I still think is bullshit. Like, yeah, of course, everyone's stealing signs. It's part of the game. Nobody in the SEC said a fucking word because they were all like, wait, is everybody mm-hmm. else really not doing this? This is why we're better than you. We do all this advanced scouting shit. Like, we're, yes, we're all doing it. We don't say it. The rest of the Big Ten was all butthurt about it. And then you're like, oh, that's why the Big Ten has really fallen behind in the last 15 years. Which, by the way, you know they're still doing corrupt shit. They just weren't keeping up with how corrupt they were supposed to be. Yes. And five NFL. Yeah, they're fucking corrupt, too. They knew about CTE and brain injuries and hit it for years and stuff. I just think everybody else is more corrupt than them. But they're still corrupt as fuck, too. Also, shout out FIFA. If FIFA was on this list, they would even be above politicians. They're the most corrupt in the world. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Robert? All right. Number one, Mafia. Number two, College Football Playoff Committee. Number three, Hollywood. Number four, NFL. Number five, politicians. Big government guy. Don't forget to vote for me. Well, actually, Robert, they're, they're last because Alex is going to be our new mayor and he's not corrupt. No, I didn't get picked. Yeah. I make the runoff. No, okay. And just because he's fighting the system doesn't mean the rest of the system changes. Oh, well, then don't forget to vote for me. For yeah, the position. Comp controller. That just sounds like a cool job. I don't know what it does. We'll make stickers that says vote hog for positions. Hog the vote. <laughs> oh, I like that. There you that's go. The, that's the that's the campaign slogan right there. That's it. That's Pretty it. Good. I learned from my my time in politics, buddy. Don't worry. Do you need any advice? I'll be your uh, I'll be like your political mentor. Mm-hmm. I mean, I will always Let me run your ads. The rest go, of my I'm life. I'm gonna go in negative. Negative is my no. Scale. You don't even have to. But ads are expensive. You don't have to buy ads. But if no, you, no, no. Like you'd say thirty five dollars. You can just say for the rest of your life that you ran for mayor, or whatever office it is. Like that's why I'm gonna. I'm gonna like former mayoral candidate is what I'm gonna roll <laughs> with from now on. After the cow up in crawfish, I'm former mayoral candidate Alex Middleton. If anybody presses you, it'd be like I never heard about it. It was a grassroots campaign. It was. <laughs> Zero dollars spent on advertising because that's not what my money goes to. My money goes to you guys, you know? I'm you for the people. There. I'm for the people. People were like, oh, you don't want to raise money to do this? No, 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 no. I don't need your money now, buddy. I don't need your money now. That's called taxpayer money. You don't want to be in anyone's money. pocket. When I'm in charge, that's when I use your money for good. Right. I don't want to be in anybody's pocket unless it's my own pocket. Unless it's my own. Um, Great power rankings, Mundo. Great job, mm-hmm. bud. That's how you he won MVP last year. I'm just saying there's a reason. There's a reason. Uh Jonathan Chappa has our next question. He's at once upon a Chappa on Twitter. Great handle, by the way. Uh Jonathan says, Is it better to be crusty, musty, or dusty? Dusty. Musty, you oh, oh no. Okay. Dusty, you're just a little dirty. Got some shit on you. That's fine. You know, you're a little, you're working outside. Fucking some sand sprayed up. Gotcha. You're a little musty. You stink. Nobody likes the stinky guy. Not always. Not always. Dude, that's what musty is. You got a little musty smell. Doesn't always mean it's bad. And must, sometimes oh, women are attracted to the smell of your manly must. Very rarely. Or maybe other men. I don't know. Whatever you're into. Very rarely is musty good. Like it's rare. And I've never come across it. There's a guy that comes in and orders food. And we just call him the stinky guy. Because he's stinky. And then crusty, that's nah, just fucking be. gross. If you're crusty, Krusty's, something's wrong. If we were power ranking, crusty's the worst. Like that just makes you think far. of pink eye. If you've ever had pink eye, knock on wood. Hopefully you have you you've been blessed and have it. Like when it's just like when you wake up and it's like crusted over, you're like oh god, no, no, no. Like that's like that is, ugh. Well, it's I nails it, on a chalkboard to me. Feeling like crusty, like, anything. Uh, I thought it meant like crusty personality. I was like, oh, Pat's kind of crusty. That that Maybe does that kind both. of work, yeah. Uh, crusty, I was just thinking like gross, like yeah, crust between your toes or something. You're just so dirty that it's crusty. Like that's fucking that's gross. Are you got some sort of infection. Think? I think that by uh by dusty, 
He means Dusty Baker. That's what I think he means. And as you can see now on the prep sheet, yeah, <laughs> Robert totally just ed- capitalized the D in Dusty. And... So now it's a name. <laughs> and it plays. Being... Yeah, I mean, he won a World Series. Mm-hmm. Invented the high five. I mean, he knew Hank Dusty Aaron. Was great. Just all yeah. around, everybody okay, so makes Dusty, all be Dusty. That in that case, yeah, Dusty wins. Great observation, right there, Robert. I can't. I mean, we can't argue with that. I can't even argue with that. So, well done. <laughs> great, great question, Jonathan. Great answer, Robert. I have nothing else to say. Let's wrap it up, though. Let's wrap it up. We have one more question from our boy Cruz Garcia at my name Craig 08. His second time appearing on the podcast today. Uh, Cruz says, "Why do our noses get stuffy when we have allergies? What good does it do? I'm not sure." Or I'm sure not being able to breathe is worse than pollen. Well, yeah, our noses get stuffy because that's the allergies fucking with you. Like the allergies you're trying to take over, and that's them being like, "Ha ha, we're allergies. I'm pollen. Now I'm in your, now I'm in your body, and now you can't breathe as good, and your body's trying to fight it." Like your noses get stuffy because of the pollen, not because your body's like, "Fuck you." This is the pollen just an asshole? Yeah, but that's like the body's response to trying to shut down the pollen. Is to like block up the nose, but then you're just breathing it. That can't be better. Like, how is our body not figured think, out a more efficient way? Yeah. Well, because like evolutionary, you're like, well, if I don't breathe through my nose, it's not gonna get stuck on all these like membranes hairs that are in my nose, and then all, yeah, all the membranes. Like, so maybe it's like just breathing it in. I don't know, but and maybe maybe I guess the pollen bacteria. Or, or I guess, see, it's not bacteria though. It's just fucking. Because everything about pollen sucks and algae sucks. That's why it just sucks. That's a good one. Yeah, let's go with that. Pollen has it, eaten I mean, it's our like, evolution. It's pollen's just evil. That's what it is. It's not when we get allergies. It's just allergies are assholes, and that's really what it is. Allergies are just like like a guy punching you in the nose, except your nose doesn't swell up and get all red. It just makes you harder to breathe. <laughs> So yeah, allergy oh. is allergies are just assholes. It's allergies taking over. That's why. R.I.P. to everybody in Austin. Yeah. It's just fucking allergy RIP. central all the damn time. Rip in peace. Rip in peace, guys. All right. Well, that was a great question, Cruz. Great question to everybody that uh that submitted anything. Thank you for all the not cools. We had a ton of those. I feel like for as much as we had to do on our little prep sheet, this has been um not as long as Robert probably thought it would be. It was not yeah. as long as I thought. You happy with us today? There you go. Still long, but there you go. Look at us. <laughs> Look at us. Hey, we have two more podcasts this year. Three more, really. The two more podcasts and then a best of. It's gonna be dope. Best of. I've been. I, I'm trying to put the the best of together a little early. Say it every it's year. It's called the best of because because <laughs> no, I know, but like this year, I really am. Um, I've already got pieces of it, so. We're going to go on that, but you guys are the best. Thank you guys so much for, for watching us, for listening to us, for participating. Everybody that was nominated for the Gravies Awards, congratulations again. Congratulations again Saturday, December 16th, Southern Star Brewing Company, 3525 North Fraser Street, the 10th Annual Pass, the Gravy Christmas Spooktacular, and Gravies Awards going down in the tap room. It's going to be awesome. That's going to be about a 1230 start for us there. Um if you're listening to us, give us a five-star review on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, whatever else you listen to podcasts. If you're not listening to us and you're watching us, go go give us a five-star review at all those places. Subscribe to us. Uh, if you're listening, go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit play for a little bit. Hit play on the audio version. If you're watching on YouTube, give us clicks on both ends. Uh, I'm at Alex J. Middleton on Twitter. Robert is at Robert Barbosa 03, not Robert Barbosa, at Robert Barbosa 03. Pat is at not Pat Dion. And uh, we are at Pass the Gravy Pod on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, wherever. Please go comment on the YouTube channel. Share us with a friend. You guys are the best. We love the fuck out of every single one of you guys. We can't wait 10 days away from hanging out with all of you guys at the Christmas Spooktacular. It's going to be awesome. We love you guys. Y'all are the best. Have a great rest of your week. Until we talk to you guys next time pass the gravy ya bitches gravy gang 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 
baby, pop the top and let it spread. As we listen into past the grave, we're going fishing for your bitch today. We're drunk in Houston, eh? Houston, baby. Now we go ahead and lick and we'll get rich today. Rich, bitch. Houston, Texas.